Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Kandan Modalya. I am a professor at IIT Bombay, and it's a, a great uh, privilege and honor to introduce uh, Mr. Dalit Kapoor. But before that, uh, I would like to narrate uh, our own personal experience. Uh, in fact, he invited us to be with him in uh, Vimtal for a retreat and we ate only grass, as people say, right? That's what people think. Uh, but uh, he had brought uh, a chef from uh, Bangalore who ended up making amazing fish. In fact, we ate so much and then we said, no, no, don't make so much. Uh, there were too many options. So we reduced and it became, it became all right for the There was plenty in the uh, so I was uh, introduced to uh, Professor. I was introduced to Energy through an organization called Wheels Global. Uh, that is a Washington D.C. based uh, nonprofit, and in fact, I am a director in that in the education vertical. So they said that uh, it'll be good if I can see what. Uh, Dalitji is doing, whether it can be brought under the educational health activities of the of each global, which is a non profit So, subsequent to that, Dalitji invited us to come to Vimta for the retreat. It was a four and a half day retreat. We just got back, I think it was about uh, maybe about 10 days ago, we returned. And we have already lost about uh, three kilos. Okay. And uh, my wife is here, Kapuna. Uh, she also attended that. And uh, so we are all enthusiastic about it. I run a project called Spoken Tutorial at IIT Bombay. And uh, we started it to promote IT training. So the Wheels Global said that I should consider. Uh, Taking, uh, making a spoken tutorial on the plant based uh, wellness foundations approach. And uh, that's also one of the reasons why I went to uh, Pimta. Uh, of course, the other reason is uh, my wife has hypertension. So we wanted to write. I'm, uh, let me put it this way, I'm cautiously optimist that it will work. And uh, the spoken tutorial will be created. I'll play it towards the end of the uh, LG's talk. We have also dubbed it into, uh, that is in English, we also dubbed it into Hindi and Tamil. So I will play that for a few minutes so that you get an idea of what is possible with this technology. So I had actually given the link for Lalitji's, uh, you know, my story. You, you all might have. Already seen that, uh, but I will tell briefly in my words the way I understood. And uh, Laliji got his BTEC from IIT Kanpur in 1971, chemical engineering, and then he went to UCLA to do master's MBA, and uh, subsequently he became a serial entrepreneur. Uh, but at the age of 50 or so. He developed, he developed cancer and then, uh, and then uh, he underwent treatment, he developed several other illnesses and then for all of them he found that uh, he could reverse all of them. In fact, if I am not mistaken, he is not under any medication. Okay? And so that is the kind of thing that he has and uh, I believe it's a, it's a great opportunity for us. By the way, is there any doctor here? Okay, thank you. Because the doctor's role is going to be extremely important as I keep telling. Because I classify people into three groups. One is uh, people who don't have any of these illnesses. For example, uh, you know, there are people who don't have. So they can start practicing immediately. And there are people whose family history says that they will develop, but they are still 
yeah, let's say 25, 30 years, they haven't got any of those, they can also try it again. But then the third group, people who are taking medication, maybe who are taking medication for 20 years, 30 years. So it would be good if some doctor's help is also available, who will monitor, who will say, who will guide them, so that I am pretty sure that it can be done, but they need uh, that comfort. So it would be really good to have some doctors on this side. Um, so coming back to uh, Laluji's uh, uh, background, uh, he has about 65,000 followers and he said that in various WhatsApp groups and so on and so forth, uh, out of which he believed that at least half are active. And uh, one of the things that he is going to talk about is fasting and uh, in fact Navratri is going on. Uh, some are doing Navratri fast and for the first time ever in our lives, we went on Navratri fast. So, uh, we have at the end of the talk, we have uh, uh, Saudana Pichri for people who are doing fast uh, because there is less protein and all that and some vegetable juice and a few other things. So, anybody who is uh, uh, on fast is welcome because you may break your fast at that time and uh, other people are also welcome but we don't have, we didn't expect, we expected a small amount but I am very happy to have all of you here and I believe that about, uh, about 30 people are from outside and other people are from outside. I welcome all of you to this talk and I want all of you to try it and one thing we are going to do definitely after the fast is we are going to switch over to two meals. Okay. In old days, at my home, they would start the meals, start with meals at 10 o'clock. Okay. And end with another meal at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. That's it. And of course, in between, they will have some snack. So, we are definitely going to do that. Previously, there was a worry. Three meal to two meal, how are you going to do it? But if three meal to one meal is possible, then three to one to two is definitely possible. So, we are definitely going to do that. And uh, so, with that uh, brief uh, introduction, actually it is not an introduction, it is more of uh, some babbling, but I thought that it would be good to get started and it would also allow someone to come inside and go to the <laughs> Thank you, Professor Kanan. And hello, everybody. About uh, 10 years ago, in fact, almost 10 years ago, two months short, on January 1st, 2013, um, I watched a documentary. The documentary is called Forks Over Knives. And it uh, kind of resonated with uh, me and my wife. Uh, we thought it made a lot of sense. What it stands for is that instead of using a fork to cut your rib cage and have open heart surgery, you know, you need a fork to cut your rib cage and have open heart surgery. If we choose our, we need a knife to cut rib cage, and if we choose our fork properly, that means eat the right food, you will never need the knife. That's the purpose of that documentary. And uh, we immediately decided to make some changes in our diet and lifestyle. Within about a year, I lost 50 pounds. And I was taking five different medications um, for diabetes, uh, hypertension, which is blood pressure, gout, hypothyroidism, and I was also suffering from my osteoarthritis had started in my knee uh, for six months. And uh, there's something called sleep apnea. When you sleep, you snore so loud, your breathing is interrupted. And they give you a mask to wear. And the mask provides a little positive pressure, so that makes breathing easy. And uh, it's very inconvenient. Every night you have to wear a mask and lie down. And then, of course, seasonal allergies, what we call hay fever during 
uh, February, March, during springtime and fall time, September, October, you, you get up with a congestion in your nose and, and it takes you some time, a uh, cup of tea or two and some sneezing. And so within a year, all these diseases were gone. It was amazing. Uh, all medications except one were gone because my doctor, my diabetes doctor who was an endocrinologist, she will just not let me get off the medication. And then in six months I told her that I'm getting off this medication also. So during this time and then for next following uh, four years, I, because I was retired, I was fortunate to have found buyers for the companies I started. And uh, it became my passion to learn about uh, uh, health. And uh, fortunately, many uh, lectures uh, of medical colleges are um, published on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and learn a lot of things. Yeah, YouTube is bad also and good also. It all depends what use you put the technology to. And then uh, in 2017, September, um, my IIT Kanpur batchmates uh, WhatsApp group, uh, they had added me and then they, I started writing in them and they said, Lalit, you make a lot of sense. We should create a separate health group. So we created a separate health group for my batchmates and then they started getting better. Their weight came down, blood pressure came down, blood sugar came down. Then in the March of 18, their wife said, how come we are not part of the group? So it started another group. Then a talk was arranged for a pan IIT audience and so a, another group. After every talk, I generally land up creating a group because people want to know more. So one thing led to another, then a talk at IIT Delhi, uh, a, a workshop, half a day workshop. So now I've gone over 300 and 25 WhatsApp groups, about 65,000 people in uh, 46 countries. And, uh, and they all are healing. We just had, uh, had lunch at a restaurant called Ahar Veda. Ahar Veda is in Andheri. It's the only restaurant I'm aware of in India, which is totally plant-based, whole food compliant. And some of the members are here, and many testimonials came up. So I'm here to share with you what is it that I'm doing. And it's not something the credit doesn't go to me. I'm only a messenger. There are some senior doctors in uh, America. They are 88, 89 age profile now who have come to realization that uh, medicine has gone too far in the pendulum of medicine has gone too far in the wrong direction and we are over medicating ourselves and uh, it is best to bring it back into a more optimal stage. See, we all know that if you're suffering from a disease, those symptoms are harmful to you. Extremely high blood pressure is harmful to you. Extremely high sugar is harmful to you. Extremely high cholesterol is harmful to you. So when you take some medication, and we also all know that medications have side effects. So these two are known facts. So when you take some medication, the benefit that accrues to you is more than the harm that accrues to you. So it's good to take that medication. But then as you take more medication, you reach a point where extra medication causes more harm than good. And this whole concept is called J curve. So there is a, there's a point, a bottom point, beyond which if you take more medication, you're, you're hurting yourself and you're re reducing your life expectancy. We'll, we'll talk about that. So um, here's an example of, uh, of a girl who works in Silicon Valley. And uh, she was extremely obese. Normal BMI is, in America, is 18 and a half to 25, it's called normal. For India, it is 17 to 23. 
And you can check your BMI by going on Google and typing BMI. It gives you a formula, you just punch in your height and weight. It gives you your BMI. And 25 to 30 is overweight, 30 to 35 is obese, 35 to 40 is extremely obese, and over 40 is morbidly obese. That means your life will be cut short. You're so overweight, your life will be cut short. So within 18 months, she has changed herself, and she was pre-diabetic, which went away in three months. She had high blood pressure. All, she reversed all of that and got off medication. She suffered from GERD, which is what we call acidity or khatti dakaryana. And she cured that within six months. She was also asked to sleep with sleep apnea, just like myself. And within three months, that was gone. So it's just one example to, to, to prove the point. And I have thousands and thousands of people who are achieving similar results. And the beauty is that these results are obtained without doing any portion control. And uh, because portion control does not work. When people tell you, and there are a lot of young people, so you don't have that issue. But as you grow old, the weight keeps coming on. And you put on weight. And, and when you go see a doctor, they put all the blame on you that you are eating too much and not exercising enough. You, you attend these New Year's Eve parties and everybody is trying to say that, okay, I've taken a resolution, next New Year resolution, I'm gonna work out. So they talk about joining a gym. Sometimes people uh, join a gym and then they tell them that, please delete that cancellation clause. I, do not, I don't want to be able to cancel it then I'll be more motivated to make sure that I use my money's worth. <laughs> but the thing is that it does not work. It's, your problem is not that you're not going to gym. I have people who are on wheelchair and they're recovering. They're losing weight. So to think that by exercising you will solve your problem is flawed. The problem is the food and there's some other problems. So, so we'll talk about that. Okay. Here is a slide of two people. They went on vacation. When they came back from vacation, they found that their kitchen is flooded. Why it's flooded? Because the sink got clogged. You know, they poured the, the chicken grease in the sink. In New York, it gets, in winter, it gets below freezing. They turn the heat off to save electricity or gas. And people come to India for one month vacation. You know, a lot of our people who are living in India, they come during January, or they combine Christmas, January, Christmas, they get one week off, so they come for three, four weeks. They go back and they find that the kitchen is flooded. So the first response is to go to the broom closet, get the broom, and mop that water. That's the first response. Are they at least turn the faucet off? Uh, if, if the faucet is still running, mopping is not going to help. You got to first, you got to turn the faucet off. Second, you got to unclog the sink. Once you have done that, then you can mop the floor. So this is what is happening in our society today. When we have high blood pressure or high blood sugar, we go see a doctor. You know, till 45, you live a healthy life. Okay, 45, 47, 48. Some number, some place between 45 and 50, you. You feel uncomfortable, you go see a doctor and he says, you have got high blood pressure. Now you have become a patient. Till that time, you were a normal person. So then you say, okay, I mean, just give me the medicine. You know, all your life you've been taking medica medications for three, four days, maybe one week. So you think, okay, give me a medication for one week. I'll take it. The doctor says, no, no, this is not that kind of illness that you've been having in the last 45 years. This is a lifestyle disease. And they tell you, it cannot be cured. It is a lifestyle disease. Number two, it cannot be cured. Number three, it's a progressive disease. It will keep getting worse. But I will help you manage it. Now just imagine if in your house, or, or those of you who are students in your mom and dad's house, 
on top of the dining table, the ceiling is leaking. Heavy rains have been happening, unseasonal rains have been happening, the ceiling is leaking. So you call a contractor. Now in homes in America, you have a slanted roof, and this is the ceiling. This is called attic space. You can crawl in the attic, you store old suitcases, old clothing. So you call a contractor, the contractor looks at this and says, hmm, this is an incurable leak. The first thing he says is, this is an incurable leak. Second thing he says, and I tell you, this is a progressive leak. It will keep getting worse over time. But I will help you manage it. This is what doctors tell you. I will help you manage your blood pressure. I will help you manage your diabetes. I will help you manage your cholesterol. So he goes to the attic and puts a four inch thick sponge okay, and comes back and patches up the sheet rock on the ceiling and says, okay, I have fixed it. And you pay him, he leaves. Now after two, three years, four years, same leak emerges again. So you call the contractor and you get mad at him. It's an incurable leak and it's a progressive leak. I told you, so you cannot blame me, but I will help you manage it. He goes up into the attic again, puts another four inches thick foam and comes back, patches the ceiling and, 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 and he says, I have fixed it. Now, after another three, four years, the leak comes back. So you call the same contractor, get mad at him, say, no, no, you cannot get mad at me. I have disclosed you from day one. It's an incurable leak, and it is a progressive leak, I told you. So he goes up, he puts a little uh, a fan and a heater, electronic circuit, so as soon as the, the water level goes up, the heater will come on, and the fan will come on, and it will evaporate. That is what is happening to the healthcare industry. And, and we go see a doctor and doctor says, okay, you have got now a lifestyle disease. It's an incurable disease. It is not incurable disease. If it is a lifestyle disease, just change your lifestyle, it will go away. It's as simple as that. That is what all my members are reporting. And you begin to see changes within a day, especially for those patients who are suffering from diseases where they know their limit. If you are an angina patient, uh, if angina patient, you know that I cannot walk more than 25 yards without resting. That's my limit. These angina patients within a day can walk 35 yards from 25. By end of week one, they're walking 100 yards. This is the kind of improvement I'm talking. You see the change within a day. Within a week, you have lost weight and your blood pressure has come down. People are getting off medications within two weeks. And I'm not kidding. Many, many people are getting off medication. And we'll learn later today that many people are taking medication they should not have been taking to begin with. Okay. So that's the purpose of today's talk. So in the introduction, we uh, want to talk about, uh, we already discussed why not turn off the faucet. The second thing is this, take a pill when ill. You know, about 90 years ago, at that time we used to have these infectious diseases were our biggest enemy. You know, uh, cholera, smallpox, measles, typhoid, polio, these kind of diseases. And penicillin was invented. When penicillin was invented, they found cure for many infectious diseases. And, and those penicillin uh, tablets you have to take for one week. So three generations between then and now, three generations. And we have developed the psyche somehow in our mind that when ill, just go take a pill. So what's wrong with it? We'll just take a pill. You go to doctor, you said, just prescribe me a medicine. So it is not doctor's fault that they're prescribing a medication. If they don't prescribe you medication and simply say, no, no, why don't you go home, start taking a glass of green juice, start eating some more fruits, and start doing some walking, 
you will say the, the doctor has cheated you. I gave those dar rupay bhi diye or dawai bhi nahi di. You know. In fact, doctor will go to his or her closet and take out some sample. I say, take this. Because, you know, these, these medical salesmen, they come to doctor's offices and they give them free medicines. You know. So, that was the problem. But when, after Second World War, people got more affluent, more to eat, they started putting on weight and they started developing lifestyle diseases, blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, heart problem, cancer. Cancer is also a lifestyle disease. People don't realize that. Okay. So then the pill did not work. So because the pill did not work, they came up with this new excuse that these are lifestyle diseases. First of all, they're your fault that you're eating too much and you're not doing enough exercise. And secondly, they cannot be cured. So you have to take that medication rest of your life. We will only help you manage it. Okay. So this is what happened. Now this next, wise knows nothing and fool knows it all. It's a quotation by Shakespeare. And, and what it refers to is that when we acquire some new knowledge, a new Nobel Prize, a new discovery, there are two types of responses. There are some people who are confident and a little cocky. They say, finally, I know everything. Till yesterday, this was the missing piece of information. And now I know everything. Okay. The other group of people, more wiser, they feel a little humbled. They say, this is yet another proof that what I know is only minuscule of what is out there to be known. So they say, I, I know nothing. Kind of like a, a child who only learning A, B, C, D. When he finishes up to Z, he says, Mom, I have learned everything. I know up to A, B, C, D, up to, up to Z. Z, not Z. We call it Z in America. So, so then the mom says, Nay, beta, abhi to aapko CAT, CAT, DOG, dog padna hai. You know, abhi nahi hua hai. So that is what goes on. The point is, what we know today is only minuscule compared to what is out there to be known. When Dimitri, the Russian chemist, built the, the table of elements in 1869, there were only 28 elements in that table of elements. When I was studying chemistry in seventh grade, there were 100 elements. Today, there are 118 elements. So the science is progressing. Now, maybe 100 years from now, when our great-grandchildren are learning, there might be 188 elements. Who knows? The point is, we are only playing with a partial deck. We are not playing with a full deck. So if in a game of gin rummy, you're holding five of hearts and seven of hearts and waiting for six to come to make your pure sequence, but the deck is not complete, the six of heart is missing. You lose the game, but it'll never come. So keep in mind that we are playing with only partial deck. So what that means is that when we learn that carrots have beta carotene, and, and then we start making tablets out of beta carotene because we think carrots are good and good for health, good for heart health. So they started prescribing, cardiologists started prescribing beta carotene. Now, beta carotene did not heal the person, carrots did. So to think that there's only one, it's a, it's a carotenoid. There are actually 750 carotenoids. We now know them. Okay. And of that 750, 50 are needed by human body. But we didn't know that. We just knew about beta carotene. So all the research has shown that beta carotene supplements fail miserably because they are lacking the other 49 carotenoids. So Taking supplements is absolutely worthless. 
because supplement only can be made of things you know. Things you don't know, which are there in the vegetable or food, which are there in the food you're eating, whatever food you're eating, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes. They have many more nutrients, but we know few. So you take that one nutrient out and say, offer it as a supplement, it's not going to work. As simple as that. And besides, what happens is, when you're when your cell, your cell, you see this is one cell and we have 30 trillion cells in our body, okay, 30 trillion cells. And each cell has receptors for different things. So it has receptors to receive carotenoids. And when you take a beta carotene supplement, a lot of these receptors get filled with beta carotene and not enough are left for other 49 carotenoids. So taking supplements causes imbalance. And that's why supplements should not be taken. There's only one exception, and that is of also of our own making. B12 vitamin used to be found, and is still found, in water, which is in contact with soil. So it was in rivers, lakes, underground water, wells. But now we take that underground water and we chlorinate it for municipality. So we kill the B12. So you are going to develop B12 deficiency. You will not find B12 in plant-based food. So that is the only supplement you need to take and no other supplement. Okay. Let's talk about the next. The proof is in the pudding. So you may do something theoretically that this is very good. But just because you are theoretically said it is good doesn't mean it is good unless its results are good. About six, seven decades ago, a proposal was made by several scientists, nutritionists. They said mother's milk is not good enough for the baby. It doesn't have enough protein, it doesn't have enough calcium, and we should tell mothers to stop nursing their babies. Okay. I'm, I'm glad that they did not adopt that recommendation. We would have been a miserable failure. Okay, so, so mother's milk is the right food for the newborn baby. So if mother's milk has less protein than what you think is needed, then you are wrong, not mother's milk is not wrong. Please understand. Okay, and we'll come to that, that point again. Okay, human evolution. We evolved in, in what is now African sub-Sahara. Okay, it used to be lush green forest. And we just jumped from one tree to another. So if there was a Saturday night party, all of us went jumping four, four, five miles to the tree where the party was going on. Okay. We were too scared to come down. And as these trees became further apart from close, as the weather changed, became further apart, now it was too risky to jump from one tree to another. So we walked down, walked a little bit, and climbed up again. So in that process, we first walked on all four, and we would stand up to make sure there are no predators out there, and then walk on four again and climb up. Now, as trees became further apart, we walked there walking more, and we learned how to walk and keep looking, more efficient. And that's how we became two-legged animal, the VR. So we first ate fruits, mostly fruits and some nuts. Okay. Then as we came down, we ate some roots. Kandamool in Sanskrit we call Kandamool. That's what we ate. Then as the distance became longer, we found some grains, some rice, some wheat, barley. This is how we evolved. Now we didn't have tools. We, had, we were in the stone age, we only had stones. So we were not hunters. We could not kill a buffalo or a deer or a you know, pig with stones. Maybe we could catch a tiny rabbit or a, or, or, a, or a chicken. Now also, another observation is that we controlled fire only about 400,000 years ago. So we had no use of fire at that time. Because you could not control it, turn it on and off, not like what you do in your kitchen now. Now just imagine you are living in that time. Just imagine. And 
you have on one hand an apple or a papaya. On the other hand, some meat that you picked up, a dead chicken or maybe a tiger had hunted a, a deer and you found a bone. Of course, cooking is not there because fire has not been controlled. What will you eat? Will you eat that meat or will you eat that papaya or mango or apple? You will eat the apple. I mean, raw meat, has anybody eaten raw meat in this room? No, it tastes terrible. It tastes very bad. Now, we did eat some fish because we always travel along the water. You know, you can live without food for many days. In fact, there's a record of 385 days. One person in Europe fasted for 385 days. Everybody in this room can survive for three, four months. There's enough fat in our body. The fat is for a rainy day. The problem is we never experience the rainy day. There's always enough food available. In today's society, if one country is facing a famine, all other countries will provide food to that country. So people don't experience famine. Generally speaking, there have been some cases in Africa. So the point is that intuitively you can say that you would not eat raw meat or raw egg. You will not eat it. You will eat fruits or a cucumber or a kakari or a tomato. Okay. But we did eat some fish because fish was easy to catch. You didn't need a strong tools. You could just take a cane and, and then make sharp in it and, and poke into it. And also fish, see they eat sushi. Sushi is raw fish. So you can consume fish, take the skin out and, and wash it well, and it tastes okay. It does not taste bad. So only thing in non-vegetarian or in animal food that we probably ate was fish. Our studies show, studies of paleo poop, paleo poop analysis shows that there was 5% animal protein and 95% was plant-based food in our diet. Okay. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about the various myths we hold about diet and nutrition. The one myth most common is, you must have heard people say, some senior people, you know, whenever this discussion comes up, a wise man comes up in a room and says, you know what, I think you should eat everything in moderation. Many doctors say that. See, doctors are not taught nutrition. Doctors are taught medicine. When you refer to somebody, say, my brother has gone to London to study medicine. You don't say, my brother has gone to London to study good health. No, they study medicine. The current medical system came up in 1930s after a study which was funded by Rockefeller and Carnegie. The study was called the Flexner Report. There's a report. You can Google it and see it. Okay. Flexner was a brother of a middle management employee of Rockefeller. And they both were in the business of making medications or, or chemicals which make medications. So they talked to their friends in the US government and they said, I think we should formalize the medical education. Some people are offering one-year course, some are offering two-year course, some are offering four-year course. There are a lot of quacks are out there. There are some homeopaths, some naturopaths, some Ayurveda, some bone manipulators, you know. So after one year of his study, Flexner suggested that we need to get all these people out of practice. We should formalize four-year education. After four years, there would be a comprehensive exam and only those who pass that exam will get licensed to practice. And only they can prescribe medicine. So it was all focused on medicine. So they tell you if the symptoms are, if the disease is A, the medicine is X. If the disease is B, medicine is Y. If the disease is C, medicine is Z. You know, that's like, that is what they're learning. So they're learning what disease will have what symptoms. And then to take care of that disease. And very often what they mean by taking care is getting rid of the symptom. The symptoms are messengers 
coming from your body. Your body is trying to say, hey guy, listen to me, something is not right. Your pressure, breath pressure is going up. Change your diet, change your lifestyle. They are warning signs. When you go see a doctor, what does he do? Say, okay, no problem, I'll lower it. And when I went for the first time, he did not tell me. He said, it's your diet and lifestyle, and I accepted it uh, because I was overweight. I lost 50 pounds in one year, okay, and I have lost another 10 since then. So, so they put blame totally on you. Now you have to ask yourself a question. In the wilderness, even today, if you go to wild, you find that all animals are eating what they feel like and as much they feel like. There's no dietitian telling a deer that Monday through Friday eat this green grass in this valley and on Saturdays come to this hilltop and eat this brown one and on Sundays just for two hours do this. Nobody's telling you. How come we need that kind of thing? Ever question that? We also are designed like that, have evolved like that. The studies have shown and then the studies were conducted in 1931. They're known as self-selection studies. The studies showed that when children, young children, of 15 months to 30 months, are allowed to eat a buffet table, low table, where kids are young, and they're allowed to eat whatever they feel like, lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner, three meals. There are only two nurses sitting in the corner, and all the children are eating whatever they feel like, all over their face, messing up. But in six months, they found the body chemistry was perfect. There were no deficiencies. It is called self-selection. All animals can do self-selection. The studies have done, been done on cats and dogs also. See, in 1930s, we were very honest people. Money making was not heavy on our mind. Research was funded by US government and Canadian government, okay. So, so this study, particular study was done by the Canadian government. So how come we lost our ability to self-select? And my hypothesis is that if we can get over all our addictions to food, see food is addictive, just like cigarette smoking, alcohol, you know, marijuana, food is also addictive, okay? And caffeine is extremely addictive. So once we get rid of our addictions, we can be in a form where we can eat whatever we feel like, as long as the food is plant-based whole food, not refined food. And that's what we're going to learn today, okay? Not, no oil, not refined food, all whole food. The difference between whole and refined is you can have peanuts, but not peanut oil. You can have sugar cane, as much as you feel like, but not sugar. You can have corn butta as many as you feel like, but not corn oil or high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup, HFCS, if you read any label, you will find all the package, breakfast cereals and everything have high fructose corn syrup, because much cheaper than sugar. Europe, they don't allow it. In America and in India, they allow it. So we have lost our ability because human beings when they grow up beyond the age of five or six, they start eating for other reasons than the liking of the taste. They start eating to revolt. So if father and mother have been telling them, no, your coffee aap ke liye hai, bachon ke liye hoti hai. The five year wants to say, kyun nahi hoti hai? When father and mother are gone, he just takes out that leftover, wants to drink it. He hates it, but he wants to drink it. A 10-year-old is told by his 18-year-old brother, no, no, this beer is not for you. When you grow up, then you want. Now, he wants to grow up fast. He says, why wait eight years? I want to grow up tomorrow. So when his brother is gone, he takes the beer and he drinks it. And he hates it. You know, I had my first beer when I was 22. For some reason, I decided I'm not going to use my dad's money to buy alcohol. So at IIT Kanpur, all my friends used to say, Lalit, you're missing all the fun. I mean, this is the stuff, man, the beer, chilled beer, there's nothing like chilled beer. Huh? Is that right? Some people here? Any hands? Huh? <laughs> They're feeling shy. 
So when I got my first paycheck at the age of 22, that very evening I told my cousin, let's go, man, I want to try that thing I've missed all my life. All these friends have been telling me. So he ordered chill beer. And I had a sip, I said, oh my goodness, this thing is terrible, you know. <laughs> I mean, beer doesn't taste good, it doesn't have a good taste. You have to acquire the taste. And you acquire that taste to belong to it, to join a group of people you look up to or join some friends. Or maybe you want to date a girl and she insists that you take beer, whatever. The different reason, the reason was not the food, not that it tasted good. You have mango juice, it tastes good. Huh? You have uh, shikanjvi, even shikanjvi tastes good. So there are foods which are intuitively healthy. The point is, we started eating for wrong reasons and we started developing addictions. Once we develop addictions, it's very difficult to get out of them. Okay. So if you can get over those, you should be able to live your life eating whatever you feel like and as much as you feel like as long as you're eating within daytime hours that's another caveat because if you're eating during daytime hours your body knows what to do with it and it's not going to harm you you eat it after it's dark outside it harms you same food so there's dr sachin panda indian doctor at university of california i mean researcher University of California, San Diego. And, and, and he has done research on what we call circadian rhythm. I'll come to that. Okay. okay. So everything in, here are the myths about it. Everything in moderation is the first myth. So when you eat everything in moderation, you get disease in moderation. That's the problem. When you eat everything in moderation, you get disease in moderation. And those diseases are now accepted. They call them old age diseases. So, so the thing is when you're old, you expect old age disease. So if you go to any 50 year reunion, and a lot of you young people who are 18, 19 year old, once you graduate from IIT Bombay and then time will pass by after 50 years, when you meet as, as I meet my batchmates, you all talk about diseases. Say, oh, I'm on blood pressure medication. I just take a tiny pill. Oh, got a little arthritis. I think I'll have to have a knee replacement surgery. Yeah? Oh, I, I've got this. I've got a little arthritis, uh, asthma. They all accept it, which is wrong. The study was done 22 years ago by National Geographic magazine. And they told one of their teams to go around the world and find areas where People live a long life. So they went looking. They spent one whole year, this team, and they identified five areas where they found people living to be 95, 100, 105. And not only that they lived long, they lived 95, 100, 105 without any diseases, not the diseases we call lifestyle diseases. So to believe that in old age we should have disease is flawed. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Okay, protein myth. Now that is the biggest myth. Uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a reason behind some of these myths. You, you see these advertisements on TV, protein bar, 15 grams of protein, protein bar, 17 grams of protein. Hey man, that's better, 17 grams. 20 grams, wow, 20 grams. We all have been led to believe, number one, that protein is very important for your health. Okay? So no, no disagreement there. Protein is important. But just because something is important doesn't mean you need a lot of it. So how much protein do we need is the question. How much protein do we need? Now, when a child is born, the child doubles his weight within six months. So it is the most rapid growth cycle in your life when you're newborn. Newborn to six months, double your weight, seven, eight pounds to 16 pounds. You would think that your protein requirement as a percentage of total calories, not in weight, how many grams. He's saying as a percentage, if you're consuming 100 calories, how many of those 100 calories should come from protein?
protein is the question. So mother's milk, which nature has designed for a newborn child, should be the right milk. You know, it has only 5 to 6 percent protein. Mother's milk has only 5 to 6 percent protein. And US government in 1947 had established, based on detailed research, that 5 to 6 percent protein is the minimum requirement, daily requirement for human beings. Now, they were so heavily biased at that time, everybody was. So you need more and more, so they were concerned, I hope we don't miss out. Uh, so there's a concept we call uh, bell curve. When you do any study, it comes like a bell curve. And you say two sigma, plus minus, mean plus minus two sigma. That's 95 percent of population. If you go three sigma, you cover more. Four sigma, cover more. So they said, let's just cover more. Make sure that nobody, we make, don't blunder. So they said, we recommend, minimum is 5 to 6, but we recommend 8 to 10 percent. So they thought they were just being smart and safe. Now the thing is, your body can store extra fat. It goes under your skin, subcutaneous fat. Okay. Your body can also store carbohydrate as sugar, glycogen. So you can store about 125 grams of glycogen in your liver, which gives you about 500 calories worth of energy, and another 375 in your muscles. Muscles need to also keep some sugar ready for action. But your body has no organ where you can store protein. So if you eat extra, what will happen? Body converts it into fat. So instead of 5 percent, if you eat 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent, body just converts it into fat, takes out nitrogen. That nitrogen combines with hydrogen to give you ammonia, NH3. Ammonia is very toxic. So the body combines NH3 with water, H2O, and makes uric acid, which your kidney processes, and the waste out of that becomes urine and your body gets rid of it. Now, uric acid is also harmful. In fact, uric acid crystals are what cause your gout problem. Gout is a problem. Your body says, take it away further, as far as you can. Huh? Where, what is the point farthest from your body is your big toe. It's very interesting. The gout only causes pain in your big toe. It takes a uric acid crystal and deposits it there. So when I sold my first company, I got into money, came here to my sister-in-law's home, and I was here for a week, and they said, oh, just bring food, you know, prawns, yeah. So no, normally there's a, something called king prawn, in Bandra there's a restaurant, huh? used to sell it for 900 rupees per plate. And oh, bring more. So eating, and one prawn is one meal, essentially. Two prawns, three prawns, tikka kebab, all kind of things, you know, chicken, oh, just bring more. Roti nahi, roti nahi chahiye. Prawn is just a tikka kebab or, or prawn kaafi hai. Sabji nahi chahiye. Within, and when I flew back in seven days, in my plane, my big toe was hurting. First time in my life I experienced that pain. Landed, went to see the doctor. Because I put some hot water, didn't help. Cold water didn't help. Ice didn't help. Nothing helped, you know. Nothing helped. The doctor said, you have got gout. You're eating too much protein. So we get gout problem. It's because of protein. So the point is, if you're going to convert it into fat anyway, why are you eating it? Just eat the fat. I mean, why take it and then tax your liver, which converts it, and then tax your kidney? Unnecessarily. That is the cause of, that's one of the causes of kidney failure in old age. People 75, 80 year old are going for dialysis, very common in America. You go to any small strip mall, strip mall is where there are five, six shops, we call them neighborhood malls, you know, they're known as strip mall. So you'll have a Vikram, you'll have a convenience store like 7-Eleven, Vikram Yoga, nail care, barber shop, and a, you'll have a dialysis center. People 
It's a very big, the financial planners come, if you are into money, they say, okay, I think we should invest into dialysis centers. It's the fastest growing industry in America. Because they all are feeding them protein. So on one end, they're telling you protein, you need to eat more protein, more protein. And then other end, they're putting you into dialysis machines. The reason this myth is being propagated is that animal food is very high in protein. In fact, if you eat lobster or crab, 90% of the calories come from protein only. And the remaining 10% fat, there's no carbohydrate in any animal food. Number one observation. And there's no fiber in any animal food. So animal food is high in protein, low in carbohydrate. Now if people found out that both are wrong for you, then people will stop buying animal food, isn't it? So there's a massive campaign by the food industry to make you believe that keto diet is good. Keto diet is good. Keto diet, it started first as Dr. Atkins diet. Dr. Atkins said, eat fat and protein and you will be healthy, you won't have heart attack. That was keto diet. When he died, he was 350 pounds. If he knew how to lose weight, how come he didn't lose weight? He died at the age of 71. And we found out that he was suffering from heart disease. He didn't tell anybody. They say that he died because he fell. And maybe he fell also. Okay, that's besides the point. But he was suffering severely with heart disease. So keto diet kills you early and very bad after you're 60 years old. But you love eating fat, butter, people love butter, and, and meat, and eggs, and you know, masala omelet, all those things. Because now you have fire available, you can cook these things. Half a million years ago, you could not have masala omelets, you never ate eggs. So this is what is going on. Keto diet is the worst diet. US News and World Report reports during their last uh, publication of the year, various diets, and in those various diets, the keto diet repeatedly comes as the worst diet. But you, anywhere you read, if you write a book which talks about eating keto diet, they'll buy one million copies on day one. There's a book called Grain Brain. This is how you make book as number one bestseller. How come on the book is really number one bestseller? If the book has just come, how has it become bestseller? It has, you're going to do. So the, 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 they will buy, the industry will buy one million copies. So on, so it's already pre-agreed upon, it's become bestseller because one million copies have sold on day one. So then they write New York Times bestseller. And then they'll give it to their doctor. So the doctors will also read it. Another one is called Wheat belly, grain brain, wheat belly. People love to hear good things about their bad habits. People love to hear good things about their bad habits. If there was a book out there which said that having two pegs of scotch every evening is good for your health, every man will go, every Indian man I know for sure will go, buy that book, bring it home and give it to her wife. Honey, see, I've been telling you all along, this is good for you, good for me. That's why I take it every evening. So don't go by what gets published, okay? This is how myths get purported. Uh, okay. Calcium and dairy myth is the same. Um, people think that you have to have dairy to get calcium. That is totally wrong, because when dairy you consume, it causes acidosis. So that acidosis, that acidity it causes, to neutralize that, you, you bleach some calcium from your bones. See, your bones become strong due to the protein structure inside the bone. And when you put those bones through some kind of an exercise, okay, this is what makes the bones strong. Squats, sit-ups, pull-ups, 
They don't become strong. I mean, in olden days, in fact, there's a chalk out here. There must be. Oh, yeah. See, the calcium is very brittle. Calcium does not make the bone strong. Calcium is brittle. Bones become strong because of the protein structure and because you put them through stress. So countries which consume maximum dairy have the highest rate of hip fracture. US, Canada, Sweden, Norway, Denmark. These countries get maximum hip fractures because they consume maximum dairy. Exercise myth. There's another myth among young people. That I go to gym, so people 30, 35, 40 year old feel. I go to gym for two hours every day. What can go wrong with me? Because these people then indulge in unhealthy eating because they're so confident that nothing wrong can happen to them. So there was this cricketer, Shane, huh? five months ago he died, something like that. Okay, everybody was surprised, how come Shane died? He was such a good, such a good athlete. The, the studies have shown that of half the people who die after first heart attack, not everybody dies, but of the people who die after first heart attack, how, almost half of them had perfectly normal blood signs, not high cholesterol, not any signs of cardiovascular disease, okay. Because they were unhealthy. They, they, the people who believe in that physical exercise will solve all their problems, that's totally wrong. Okay, the last thing here is, there's a common myth that better safe than sorry. So people tell me, I just take a tiny blood pressure pill in the morning. Yeah? Just because it's tiny, you think it's good. Just to be safe. Oh, I just take a little metformin just, just to be safe, huh? to lower blood sugar. Metformin is taken to lower blood sugar. So this is a misconception that instead of sugar level rising and not taking medicine, it's much safer to let sugar level come down and take medicine. What if this is flawed? And we have proven it to be flawed, okay? It's a flawed thinking. And that gets reflected in this curve, which is called J-curve. Senior doctors who have retired in last 10, 12 years have started realizing that we have gone in the wrong direction. The pendulum has gone in the wrong direction too far. We are over-medicating the patients. Okay. Now, agreed, if you, this is, on this axis you have high blood pressure, normal or low blood pressure. High blood glucose, low blood glucose. High cholesterol, low cholesterol. Okay, so this is your disease state. And this is your health. One of the measure of health is what we call all-cause mortality. Now this curve is only for blood pressure and cholesterol, but also applies to blood sugar. It's a concept. The concept is when you are very sick, medication helps. And the side effects of medications which hurt you, the hurt is less than the help. So take medication. Then you take more medication, it helps you a little less. But if the amount is hurting you is still less than that, take medication. So here, you take medication, you come down to this point. Okay, you take more medication, you come down. You take more medication. Now you are at this point, which is the optimal health. Now when you take more medication at this point and bring your blood pressure lower or blood sugar lower or blood cholesterol lower, your health actually deteriorates. Okay. So this is a finding of last decade, 12 years. And that is leading to many very interesting conclusions and revisions of guidelines. Some of these revisions are not being properly communicated. The media does not cover it. Okay. A lot of you are young, but you, when you go back, ask your father and mother or grandfather if they are alive. They must be on blood pressure medication. So you, what I'm going to tell you now, please make a note of that. Okay. 
So question is, what is the optimal blood pressure beyond which if we take further medicine to reduce it, it is causing you more harm than good. That point is 140 over 90. Okay, 140 over 90 for everybody under age 60. So if you're, if your father or mother are under age 60 and they're taking blood pressure medication and their blood pressure is less than 140 over 90, they're over medicating themselves. Okay. And if they're over age 60, then this point is 150 over 90. Now I meet a lot of people. They come to me and say, you know, my doctor is very good. He's keeping my blood pressure 115 over 75. Your doctor is terrible. He's over medicating you, he's killing you with medication. It's not good. People come to me. Similarly, th this point for diabetes, that's very interesting. This point for diabetes, or let's say this range, okay, because there's a little flat area here. So this range is 7.5 to 8.2. So 7.5 to 8.2 is your optimal blood sugar. If you're on medication, if you're not on medication, the lower the better, it's not an issue. But if you're taking diabetic medication, the optimal is 7.5 to 8.2. And I meet a lot of people. They come and tell me. In fact, today in our lunch, I had a lunch with my uh, Bombay uh, members. And somebody came and she said her, uh, oh yeah, yeah, your sister, your sister said that. That's right, that's right. That her doctor was keeping her A1C at 5.3. I mean, that doctor should be sent to prison. This is as bad as this. So if it is as bad as this, why keep it here? Why not here? Because you are here with less medication. You are here with more medication. So 5.3 is actually as bad something I have not even seen curve go that far, like 11.5. I'm guessing, but I know that 6.3 is as bad as 10.3. Okay, so a lot of people come and tell me, well, my doctor is very good, my A1C is 6.3. It's terrible. So this was the guideline that was published. Here's the actual raw data. This is a study done on 28,000 people in 2007, 8, and 9 got published in 2010. We have known about it for 12 years. And finally, they changed the guidelines four years ago. So you see this, this is the curve for people on metformin, it comes down. This is around 8.2, this is 7.5. This is your bottom and goes back up. So if you are at, at 6.0, you're somewhere here, which is somewhere here, which is around 10.0. So 6.0 is as bad as 10.0. And if you are on insulin, these both are equally bad. This is 6.3 and this is 10.3, okay? Around 10, yeah, 10.2. 6.3 is as bad as 10.3. This is four year old. Finally, they decided to revise the specification. But the doctors here don't know about it. And that is also by design. Because these doctors are members of some association or the other. So if you're a diabetes doctor, you're a member of American Diabetes Association. And American Diabetes Association is a smaller body. There's another further specialization, American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists. It's a highly specialized doctor. You know, rich people like to go to specialized doctors. If you're a general practitioner, no, no, I don't want to talk to general practitioner. AD, no, 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 I want to go to clinical endocrinologists. They were so nervous when this study came. Here is the guideline. Read it. March 6th, it was released on March 5th. Patients with type 2 diabetes should be treated to achieve an A1C between 7% and 8% rather than 6.5%. Okay. Now, six American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, their guideline is 
it should be kept below 6.5 percent. When this specification came, I mean this guideline came, they got so nervous, well, they would lose half their business overnight. So they said, no, no, nothing doing. We don't believe in this. This is a larger body of less conflict of interest. ACP is the second largest body in America after AMA, and AMA does not get involved with these kind of specifications. So ACP is the largest body with least conflict of interest, and they are recommending it. So they came back with their own specification within one week, March 12th, and they said, we recommend that A1 should be brought under 6.5. So there's a lot of politics involved with our health, please understand. Okay, things that you read, they're not correct. There's an article today published in, in Indian Express about me, okay. And in that article, I had talked about a protein experiment that I'm gonna tell you. In National Institute of Nutrition, Hyderabad, in 1967, Dr. Gopalan and Madhwan did a study. They created two groups of mice, and they all were in injected with aflatoxin, which causes liver cancer. Then to one group of mice, they gave a diet which is 5% protein. To other group, they gave a diet which is 20% protein. And the protein was protein found in milk which is casein, and they found that the group that got 20% protein, they developed cancer. They developed cancer. The 5% protein group did not develop cancer. None of the 5% protein group rats died. The 20% protein group rats started dying. So this information was published in a journal, and an American scientist by the name Dr. Colin Campbell from Cornell University. He was working in Philippines, helping Philippine government find sources of animal protein for children malnourishment. His PhD thesis was how critical animal protein is to human growth and development. So he was a firm believer in that. His parents were in the dairy business. When he saw this study, he said, ki aap logo ne koi galti kar diye. The 20% group should have survived, not the 5%, because protein is what we need. That's what his life's work was to that time. So he wrote to the editor, he said, I think you guys have made a mistake. You have swapped the data by mistake. Please double check it. Editor got nervous. He went to the uh, doctor, he called Dr. Gopala, and he said, such and such American scientist from Cornell is making this claim. So Dr. Gopalan said that, no, no, humko bhi laga tha ki galti ho gai hai. We were also expecting 20% group to survive, but the data is data. So that when editor told Dr. Campbell that, no, it is correct data, this is the study, he went back to Cornell and replicated the study. And in that study replication, he found it to be correct. And that was a turning point in his life. Today, he is the number one nutritionist in the world. He's 88 years old. So then he did more studies. He said, okay, 5% they survived, 20% they died. How about 6%? They survived, no cancer. 7%, no cancer. As soon as he went to 8%, the cancer emerged. So his conclusion is, if in your diet, total protein is 8% or more, condition one, and your diet has animal protein, then it creates an environment in which cancer cells grow. Okay, they promote. And what has happened in India after that study? It was an Indian study. After 55 years, we consumed twice as much dairy than we consumed at that time. So we do research, but we don't listen to our own research. So animal food is very harmful because it promotes growth of cancer. This promotes growth of cancer. Initiation of cancer happens due to gene mutation. 
your genes are mutated, becomes cancer cells. And that happens for many reasons, chemicals like in this case aflatoxin or radiation or microwaves or antenna or 5G, people are questioning 5G, things like that, okay. So that was the protein. This is the blood pressure, same thing. Less than 60 normal is 140 over 90. Over 60 normal is 150 over 90. You can take a picture and give it to your granddad who may be on, on medication that this is the guideline. Okay, so now we will come to causes of chronic diseases. Causes of all or most chronic diseases can be grouped into these five groups. Number one is inflammatory food. Inflammation is the leading cause of lifestyle diseases. When we eat food which our body was not used to, our body did not eat it for millions of years as we were evolving. So here I give an example of if you live in a neighborhood, uh, Bombay is not a good example, but Delhi or Agra or small towns, you have a house and out next to the house you have a green belt of lawn, maybe 20 feet deep. You have a fence and then you have the road. So when you get up in the morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you see some sweeper cleaning the road and you don't think of it twice. Yeah, he comes every day, he cleans the road and I see him, it's not an issue. Then a newspaper boy comes or man and he delivers the newspaper, yeah, you see him every day, it's not an issue. Then your maid rings a bell and you look at through the eyeglass, yeah, come on in, she comes every morning, 7.30. Now suddenly, let's say a doorbell rings and you look in the eyeglass and you find a heavy set African uh, gentleman, dark complexion, six feet three tall. So who is he? Why has he come? I never see him. So the wife is telling the husband, ki pata nahi kwan hai, dawaza nahi khol na. You feel threatened. When you see something you're not accustomed to, you feel threatened and you go into a defensive posture. So inflammation, what is the meaning of inflammation? Inflammation meaning is your body's response to a perceived threat. Whether it is a real threat or not is not the issue, but you are perceiving it as a threat. Now in this family, different people will respond differently. If it's a typical family, you will say, chup rao, bolo nahi, apne aap chala jayega. Pretend we are not home. But if he is a colonel, your army officer retired, he'll get his pistol and he'll come and say, kone, kyo aayo aap, what, are you, what do you want? But they both are defensive response, that's what I'm trying to say. So when you eat something that body has not known, now I'm talking through evolution, through millions of years, when you write a story of your evolution on 500 pages, on page number 500, paragraph number 5 will be, and then we settled down 15,000 years ago. That is where it will be, only 15,000 years ago of human settlement will be on the page number 500, paragraph number 5, last paragraph. So now just imagine, you're eating sugar cane. The body says, Ki, haan, haan, do. good, good, I know what to do with it. Sugar cane, I've eaten it for millions of years, or whatever, thousands, hundreds of thousands. But when you eat sugar, the body gets nervous. What is this? White powder. Body gets inflamed body goes into defense, defensive response. Sugar is inflammatory. When you eat peanuts, body loves it. Anedo, anedo, I love peanuts. You eat peanut oil, body says, what is this? I have not consumed it. So that is inflammation. Body says, I have not eaten eggs. They used to taste yucky before the fire got developed, okay? This is only 400,000 years that we know fire. Okay, you following me? The point is, I'm obviously trying to tell you in a simplistic way what happens because we have evolved. I mean, we feel threatened, but a lion does not feel threatened. He has evolved to eat eggs all the time. Whatever is on eggs good for me. 
line does not get nervous. So that is inflammatory food. Inflammatory foods are very harmful. Okay. And inflammation is a leading cause of many problems. Okay. So here, inflammatory foods. So animal foods and eggs, dairy, again the same thing, dairy. You know, I mean, somewhere along the line, 15, 20,000 years ago, there might have been a famine not enough food and everybody was dying and some fellow thought ki let me instead of dying let me just milk this buffalo and he survived and when he survived everybody else said ki are khanna ji to bach gaye unhone doodh piya tha buffalo ka khanna ji bach gaye hum log bhi chalo kyun nahi try kare so kapoor mehrotra and duggal sab la ke gaay ka doodh peene lage this is how it must have started as simple as that and then when we settled down we domesticated animals and we said let's just keep some for the rainy day, keep some cows. You know, I gave a talk to Hare Krishna temple in, uh, in Delhi, and they said ki, uh, Krishanji used to drink, eat butter. So I said, yeah, Krishanji was a child who is innocent. But, Ra but Yashoda, the child's mother, have you ever seen a picture that Yashoda Maya is saying, Bada, makhan khalo? She's always working to make sure that he does not get butter, isn't it? So if butter was so good, wouldn't, wouldn't she be feeding her? Why would she go through so much trouble to hide it, to hang it from the middle of the ceiling like a, like a ceiling fan? I mean, it's common sense. The makhan was not good for people. Or excess of makhan. Okay, so you, you use a little bit, a teaspoon or two, to cook your vegetables. That's besides the point. So I suggest people, I recommend people, that if you're healthy, like a lot of you are young people, I say you eat only two teaspoons of ghee or oil per day. Two teaspoons is okay for you. But if you are sick and have diabetes and kidney problem and lung problem, no butter or ghee or oil at all. No refined food. So the guidelines are emerging. No refined food. Only natural food, unrefined. Also, no processed food. Now, the thing is, any company which is processing the food, what do they want? They want to make profit. To make profit, they want you to eat more. Now, when you make potato chips at home, you will eat 10, 12, 15, you will get tired. Your body gets satiated. But when you open a box of Pringle, you eat one, you eat two, without realizing you finish the box. In fact, they take pride. Their ad line says, you can't just have one. That used to be their tagline. Why? Because they hire PhDs in psychology to design the food in such a way that it will circumvent your satiation mechanism. So processed food by design is designed for overconsumption. When your doctor tells you you are overweight, you're eating too much and not exercising enough, you have to ask yourself, why am I eating too much? 10,000 years ago, I did not eat too much. And even today, all those animals in the wild, they don't eat too much. Why am I eating too much? Because the food has been designed that way. It's not your fault. So don't eat processed food. No haldi ram namkeen. You know haldi ram namkeen again, you eat, you finish it. Okay. No bika nir namkeen. So, no animal food, no refined food, and no highly processed food. That's all. That's all we are talking about. Don't look for solution. I have left the food, I have left the food. All nonsense. If a person is eating millet all his life, you give him little wheat, his health will improve. Because what is in millet is already in the body. He's been eating it every day, three times a day, two times a day. So, but what is in the wheat and not in the millet, he's missing that. You know? We're playing with the partial deck, the very first sentence I said. Huh? So we think that wheat has these and millet has these. 
There might be many other nutrients which are there in the millet, but not in the wheat. So a guy who has been eating wheat, you give him a little millet, his health will improve. Similarly, the guy who has been eating millet all his life, give him little wheat or rice, his health will improve. So you must consume all varieties of food. Eat what you like, but some that you don't like. Okay. So if you like rice, you are South Indian, have out of 21 meals, 11 meals have rice. I don't object. That's more than 51%, huh? 11 out of 21 meals. But some meals have little wheat, have little millet, have some quinoa, have some corn, have some oat, different grains. This is helpful. So have a variety. Similarly, dal, have some rajma, have some chole, have some uh, lobia, uh, kidney beans, small ones. Have some moon ki dal, some arar ki dal, urad ki dal, chane ki dal, masoor ki dal. Have a variety. You come to our house, you'll see we have all about 12 different dals there, dals and beans. And we make sure that we rotate them, make sure that we eat them all. So, Eat all fruits, no objection. People try to find, no, 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 this fruit is better. It's all nonsense. Okay, there's no fruit better than other. Okay, eat all your fruits, all your vegetables, both green leafy and the regular other vegetables. Eat starchy vegetables. There's another nonsense floating around. Like I told you, they say, low carb, low carb. Oh, potatoes are very harmful. Potatoes are the healthiest vegetable known to mankind. They have same amount of protein as in mother's milk, and they have only 1% fat. I mean, in the society right now, overweight is a problem. In our society, underweight is not the problem. I mean, you guys are young, 18 year old, so you are all slim. When you become 48, then we'll talk, okay? You all would have gained another 30, 40 pounds. I was an example myself. I was very health conscious at IIT Kanpur. As health conscious, let me tell you a story about myself. I used to do weightlifting. My roommate was tennis and table tennis champion, both among all five IITs. We used to order double breakfast because we thought we need protein. Instead of one, two glasses of milk. Instead of one egg, two eggs. Instead of two slices of bread, four slices, two pats of butter. And that was not enough. Then we would had a milkman who would deliver half a liter of milk. I'll boil it and we both will have one glass. And we'll have whey protein powder. We thought protein powder is what you need. Protein powder does not make your muscles. It's all getting cause causing your dialysis problem, I told you. Because protein has to be changed back into fat and nitrogen, ammonia, uric acid. Discuss that. So we I did everything wrong. And I thought I was doing it right. I was very proud of it. A lot of you are doing things wrong. The first important thing to empower yourself is educate. And when you're watching a video, think about it. Who is talking? Is this influenced by food manufacturers or pharmaceutical manufacturers? Is, it, is there a conflict of interest or not? Okay, so this is what we need to avoid. Alcohol you all know about, so I don't have to speak. Alcohol is harmful. It kills your brain cells. Okay, so minimize it. Avoid it if you can. I mean, World Health Organization says clearly, yes, red wine is healthier than white wine or scotch or rum or vodka, or whatever, hard liquor. But if you don't drink, don't start on red wine tomorrow. Oh, I hate it, but I drink it because World Health Organization says it's good for health. No, don't do that. Okay. There's a difference between healthy and healthier. Just because something is healthier doesn't mean it's healthy. Red wine is healthier, but healthier is always compared to something. Compared to white wine, compared to beer, compared to scotch. But compared to plain water, red wine is not healthier. Please understand. Similarly, they say olive oil. You must have heard, a lot of people ask me, because the Italian oil manufacturers are pushing very hard on India. The Indians are getting heart attacks, heart problems, diabetes. So they think, oh, this is, extra, this is virgin olive oil. You know? No, no, this is extra virgin olive oil. 
Have you seen those? Anybody has consumed olive oil here? Yeah, yeah. So then they have X, X, X. It doesn't matter how many virgins are attached to it. Olive oil is unhealthy, as simple as that, okay. Don't take, and olive oil for Indians makes no sense at all. I mean, butter at least you need for cooking. It tolerates very high temperatures, ghee. Olive oil does not to tolerate those temperatures of ghee. All right, go to next. Second cause is deficiency of nutrients. So when you get accustomed to eating certain foods, you develop some deficiency. I give you an example of wheat and millet. The fellow who has been eating millet will have some deficiency of things which are found in wheat. And the family which has eaten wheat all through their life will have some deficiencies which are found in millet. It doesn't mean millet is better than wheat or wheat is better. You just need to eat variety. Okay. Second one is interesting, nitric oxide. So when our body causes inflammation in our blood vessels, our blood vessels have an internal lining of a cell called endothelial cell. And we have 70,000 miles of blood vessels. And if you split them and open them, the total surface area of the internal lining will be size of eight tennis courts. That is how much blood vessels you have. So when you eat inflammatory food, it causes inflammation in your epithelial cells. And to heal that inflammation, your body takes some cholesterol and puts on top of it. That is what builds what we call plaque. It's a plaque buildup. So as you grow, your plaque buildup keeps increasing. More inflammation, more eggs and sausages and milk and cheese and paneer you eat, the more inflammation, more plaque is developing. Now your endothelial cells have a unique ability to release nitric oxide, NO. And when they're releasing nitric oxide, if the blood flows easily, very smoothly, because this has a less friction. So wherever a plaque is formed, the nitric oxide is not being released. Okay. So it is important we develop deficiency of nitric oxide. And this is a daily meal plan of an Indian vegetarian. In this meal plan, you get up in the morning, you take tea with milk and sugar, couple of rusk or biscuits, nine o'clock, alu paratha, poha, upma, idli, something, with a sweet lassi, the dahi is there, or laminate. So in every meal you see, you are getting ghee or oil and sugar and dairy. If you add them up, this is for healthy people, so-called normal people, ourselves. This is not a naughty boy who has four cokes a day. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about healthy people. We think we're eating healthy. I used to think I'm eating healthy. Every time I ordered a hamburger, I made sure that they put a cheese on it. I thought cheese is healthy. Chalo, you see, bane, cheese to aage, thodi dairy aage. That was my thinking. You know. When I made tea, I made it out of milk. Chalo, you see, bane, thoda dood to aage. Totally wrong. Concepts were wrong. So when you add it up, you find that 20 to 50% is coming from ghee and oil and sugar. And another 10 to 20% of calories are coming from dairy. You add them, 30 to 70%. 30 to 70% of your food intake has no fiber. There's no fiber. Dairy has no fiber. Oil has no fiber. Sugar has no fiber. Now what we have learned now is, we learned 25 years ago, that our body has 30 trillion cells. But within our body, there are 38 trillion foreign cells. They're residing. They're bacteria, fungi, viruses, mostly in our colon. They're throughout the body, mostly in our colon. Now these bacteria also need food. And they get that food from fiber. So when you eat rajma, this concept called resistant starch. When you eat rajma, it's not digested in your stomach, all of it, only half of it, more or less. The rest goes into your colon. When it goes into your colon, your bacteria love it. Oh, finally the guy listened to me. Rajma is coming, rajma is coming. 
they feed on it and they release gas. That's why you have gas when you eat rajma or chole. Passing gas is not an unhealthy sign, understand. It may be a social problem, but it's not a health problem at least, okay? All mammals, they pass gas. It's a sign that your, your bacteria, this is called microbiota, a garden in your colon. They're very important. The research is being conducted now in the last two decades, and we know that our gut and brain have a direct connection. There's a network between our gut and brain. You know the old feeling? I have a gut feeling that this is not the right decision. So you have to feed these bacteria. When they are fed, they make vitamins for you and other nutrients for you. So what if we just replace that 30 to 70 percent of the food, which is calorie rich but nutrient poor, with some nice fruits and vegetables or green juice. Just think about it. Body just loves it. I'm telling you, this is not, it's, there's no lie in this. You see the changes within a day, okay? You will feel so energetic. You will stop getting tired. I mean, I used to go for long drives, was fond of traveling, and after five hours of driving, we would say, I wish India me hote to chai or samose mil jate. You get tired after five hours of driving. Now I go and we, we don't stop. And we keep driving, enjoying the scenery. And I'm 10 years older than when I was 63, when I made the changes. So the point is, the human body evolved to be standing and walking 12 to 14 hours a day. Walking 12 hours a day should not tire you, okay? That is what we did, okay? You shouldn't be wanting to sit down. It is honest to goodness, I'm telling you. This is what people report the most within a week. My sleep has gotten better, and I'm higher energy. Simple things, okay? All right, we move on. So this is deficiency, fiber deficiency, nitric oxide deficiency. Omega-3, see our body is good at making fat. Anything you eat extra, it converts it into fat. But there are certain fats called omega fats that our body cannot make. So if something our body cannot make and we must eat it, it is called essential. So it's called essential fat, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. It's very good for you. Omega-6 is inflammatory. So we need to make a little extra effort to make sure that we are getting omega-3. Now, omega-3 is found in, in uh, Alsiga beach, flaxseed. So I recommend take one tablespoon of flaxseed or chia seed. Chia seeds are the tiny ones with black dots, okay. Or hemp seed, hemp seed are also good, or walnuts. These three, four things are very rich. Mustard seeds are very rich, rye, okay. Must, among all the oils, the mustard oil has the best ratio of omega-3 to <coughs> omega-6, because you don't want too much omega-6, and you want more omega-3. So if you're gonna use oil, and those who are healthy, who want to use oil, kachi ghani ka mustard oil is what I recommend. Because mustard oil, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 3 to 1, which is very healthy. When you eat peanut oil or cotton seed oil, some of the oils, there's a 1,000 to 1. There's 1,000 units of omega-6 and 1 unit of omega-3. So you can imagine it's going to cause you a lot of inflammation because omega-6 is inflammatory. So you need to keep that in mind, okay? Now, vitamin B12, I discussed earlier, it found in the water, river water, ground water, but we are now chlorinating it, our municipal supply. So we have to take supplement. That's the only supplement I recommend. Vitamin D is found in, our body makes it under sunshine. So please go out and spend at least 20, 25 minutes in the sun each day when sun is available, okay. If you keep it six months, that's enough for your winter months. You don't need all 12 months, 365 days. 
If you can do that half the days, that is enough. Your body stores it. And then water. Water is important. We don't drink enough. When you get up first thing in the morning, have two glasses of warm water before brushing your teeth. Because we have saliva. Saliva has certain enzymes which are good for us. We don't want to spit it out. We want to swallow it. This is my kitchen and I make juice out of these things. This is a shard which is like beetroot leaves, kale, arugula. This is um, celery. This is a salad, leaves, loki, cucumber, apples, ginger. This is your beetroot and this is kachi haldi, juicing apples, carrots and this is a fennel bulb. So just imagine that 30 to 70 percent calories you were taking from oil, sugar and dairy are removed from your diet and this has entered your diet. That's all I'm talking about. Very simple. That's all. Okay. Your body, have a glass of juice before every meal, initially. Once you're off your medications, reduce it to two glasses and after one year, reduce it to just one glass in the morning. Start your day. In fact, in the dorm, when I'm, I'll be teaching a course. IIT Kanpur has accepted or have asked me to teach a course as an elective. You know, you all have elective psychology, sociology, political science, economics. So they have agreed to add a course into elective, three unit, and I'll be teaching that from January through April. So this is all you need to do. Okay, nitric oxide, and I discussed other things. We go to this is you eat your water. That's another thing. In the morning, have two glasses of water, then 45 minutes after lunch, a glass, 45 minutes after dinner, a glass, and a glass before going to bed. Rest of the time, just eat your water. Make a bowl every day of carrots and mooli and, and, and other vegetables, and make sure this finish by night time. Okay, we finished this. No, excess of nutrients is another problem. So excess of animal protein I have discussed. Saturated fat excess also causes problems, a lot of heart problems. Omega-6, I talked about it. That's why you want to avoid all other oils, peanut oil, sunflower oil. They all are very high in omega-6. Sugar is very harmful, highly processed. I discussed that, processed food. This is your blood vessels. If you're a meat eater, you see all the plaque. This is all the plaque deposit. If you are a vegetarian, this is a thin layer of plaque because of dairy or eggs that you might be eating. If you're plant-based, absolutely clear. The internal lining is clear. This is the fat in the food and cholesterol in the food, but there is no lining. That's what plant-based is. And when you go to this, your, your plaque goes away. Bill Clinton, President of United States, the most powerful man in the world, had access to all the best doctors. When he retires in year 2000, within four years, he had to go through quadruple bypass. Quadruple, four blood vessels. In 2008, they put in two stents. In 2010, they wanted to do another double bypass. His friend, Dr. Dean Ornish, who teaches at UCSF, told that, Bill, don't do that. Bill Clinton's friend told Bill Clinton, don't do your bypass. It's not going to do any good. You already saw that six years ago, 2004, you did quadruple bypass. So he told him to go under care of Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, who, is at, who was at Cleveland Heart Clinic, the number one heart clinic in the world. And what does Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn tell him to do? Eat five servings of green leafy vegetables per day. Of course, everything else I'm saying, which is no animal food, no processed food, no refined food. On top of that, five servings every two hours of about the size of your wrist, green leafy vegetable. Okay. Now, people here are not that terribly sick. So a green juice is enough. It makes it easy. 
eating green leafy vegetables is the best choice. Green juice is the second best choice. It just makes it a little easy to drink. Okay, so we finished this. Huh? He did tell what happened to Bill Clinton. Oh, he, he, yeah, so since 2010 to now, 12 years, he lost weight, 40 pounds. He hasn't had any heart attack. No, not even heart attack, no heart event in the last 12 years after 2010. And earlier, he had so many events. He had heart attack, he had 2004 quadruple bypass, two stents. So you see the changes, this is what happens. Okay. Now this is an interesting subject, he's going to talk about a uh, uh, couple of things I feel very strongly. Number one is that they add food called grass, generally recognized as safe. These are additives which they have not researched. And why they don't do research, I don't know, because they'll find something wrong with it. Uh, one is more de uh, MSG in Chinese food, because they've been eating it. Say we've been eating it for thousands of years, so it should be okay. The second is interesting, what is called dalda, which is hydrogenated fat. They call it vanaspati ghee. Dalda is very bad. It's been banned in America and Europe four years ago. Of all the foods, on the bottom of the list, if there's something that is dalda, even worse than sausages, bacon, okay. These sausages, etc., are called class one, group one carcinogen by World Health Organization, which is in the same category as smoking. So smoking and eating sausages or eating hot dog is same category, they are carcinogens. Okay, there's toxicity in environment, there's not much you can do about that, okay. I mean, Delhi air is bad. So do some kapal bhati or some kind of breathing exercise, they'll help you. Third is visceral fat. So visceral fat on our body, the fat is supposed to be stored under the skin. But when our liver is making fat, and if you are eating oil, then the fat level goes up in the blood. And some of that fat gets spilled over in your liver, in your body where the organs are, they become visceral fat. And some in between your muscle cells. That is called intramyocellular lipid, a tiny fat going around. So your muscles have insulin receptors to receive the insulin. When the fat goes and blocks that insulin receptor, that's why you develop diabetes, which is insulin resistance. Insulin cannot do what it's supposed to do. It's not going into the receptors because the fat is blocking it. So visceral fat causes problems. And one solution for visceral fat problem is to eat your food in a narrow eating window. This concept is called intermittent fasting. When you do intermittent fasting, you eat all your food within eight hours, or maybe 10 hours, okay, within eight to 10 hours. For 14 hours or 16 hours, you don't eat anything. Now your body runs out of glycogen, the sugar or the glucose, in 12 hours. So when you sleep, when you get up in the morning, you're out of glucose. When you run out of glucose, the body changes the metabolic pathway from glucose burning to fat burning. And the fat it likes to burn first is this undesired fat. You say, let's not disturb that fat which is neatly stored under our skin. Let's burn this fat, which is visceral fat, intramyocellular lipids or liver fat. The liver fat causes cirrhosis of the liver. There's a disease called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. In olden days, only alcoholics used to get liver disease. Now, a lot of vegetarians also get. Drinking, a soft drink is as bad as drinking beer. Please understand. It's no different. It produces lipids, fat in your liver, which overload your blood supply with fat and it spills over. And that is the cause of NAFLD and many other diseases. Your organs, visceral organs become lethargic. 
lack of physical activity is also a problem because when we walk our lymph nodes, which is the genitorial system in our body, has no pump. See the, the rest, the, the blood circulatory system has a heart. It's pumping every minute, every second. But the lymph nodes, which are spread all over your body, which collects the waste, has no heart or no pump. So it works when you move your hands and legs, because you have, you have nodes here, lymph nodes, and you have nodes here, an underarm. And the movement makes the lymphatic fluid release and come out better. So you need to have physically active. So what I recommend is they walk 10,000 steps a day. That's the guideline. Just make sure that you're making 10,000 steps. If you fall behind, catch up on the weekend. For every week, just make sure 70,000 steps were done. That's the problem. Solves the problem. Now this is the important one. If no, Nobel Prize was given in 2016 to Dr. Yoshinori, who demonstrated that when we don't get food, we don't get protein for about 21, 22 hours, our body begins to recycle its own protein. There's a body, in our body, we have dead cells, we have damaged cells, we have misfolded proteins, which have been folded in a mirror image incorrectly. Body does not throw them, it keeps them for a rainy day. The problem is these days we don't experience a rainy day. In olden times, there were some days they were, we found a garden of fruits and then some days we did not find them. And when we did not find fruits, we just moved another 25 miles, 30 miles to put a new camp, okay. So our body knew that I'm going to run out of food. When it ran out of food, it just recycled the dead cells into amino acids. Because protein is nothing but amino acids linked together. Our body makes two million different proteins. So we don't need to eat any certain protein. We just need amino acids. And any protein you eat, it goes into the liver, which converts it back into amino acids. Okay. Then those amino acids, your body then makes their own proteins. So, they, uh, Dr. Yoshinori demonstrated that when we don't get protein for 21, 22 hours, we tend to recycle the spent protein stored in our body. There's a protein stored in every cell in a space called lysosome, like a trash can in your bedroom, okay. Then there's protein, uh, dead cells are there, so it recycles all of them. And it's a very healthy process. Now in our custom, Indian cultural heritage, we have a custom called Ekadashi. Ekadashi fast. Every 14 days, on the 11th day of the moon, we used to not eat at all for whole day. So you previous day you finished dinner, nothing for the whole day. And the next day you have normal breakfast. No big deal, you know, no. So, you got a gap of 36 to 40 hours, depending upon what is your intermittent fasting window. 24 plus normal fasting window of 14 or 16 hours. When you do that, the body cleans up the problems of the last two weeks. It becomes clean again. Okay. So it's a very healthy process and I recommend that you do, it is not difficult. Those people, once you start fasting, you actually mind becomes sharper. If you give exam while fasting, you will perform better. And your metabolic rate goes up. If to walk a mile, you will spend 100 calories. If you walk a mile while fasting, you will spend 108, 110 calories. So fasting is a very powerful tool and most underutilized tool. Our ancestors used to fast. They had a reason to fast. Every week, every two weeks, something or other, Janmashtami, Shivratri, this, Purnamashi, Amavas, whatever. They were always finding fast. And they connected fast to spirituality. So the compliance would be better. Because we, in India and all over the world also, our compliance is best for spiritual reasons. Health reasons, we may cheat, have alcohol. And then smoke and beady, pan, pan masala, oh my goodness, so terrible. Okay. 
The second thing is Navratri fast, which is what we are keeping right now. Okay. Dr. Honzo in 2018 got a Nobel Prize for his research, which showed that once or twice a year, if we keep a fast for 10 days, eating only one meal a day, not a very large meal, one meal 500 calories, if you're big, 600 calories, maybe 700, okay, so roughly your one meal, more or less, but low in protein. It should be low in protein. Now, normally fruits have the least amount of protein. So that's why we call it phalahar, because our dals have the maximum, so no dal at all. Dals and beans are the richest in protein, so no dals and beans. Then grains are also rich, 11%, 10%. So no grains, no dals and beans, two food groups are not allowed. Fruits and some vegetables. Potatoes, perfect, 5 to 6% protein. So your meal should be only of fruits and some vegetables. You can add a little bit of peanuts to make. So, so how did our ancestors know, this is amazes me, that tapioca, sabudana, has no protein. Only food known to mankind which has no protein. It's all starch. And sabudana is the best to eat while you're fasting. For those nine days, the best thing to do. Okay. It just amazes me how much they knew and how did they know about it. Okay, so we covered toxicity. Let's go to the last, which is endocrine imbalances. So there is first thing here is circadian misalignment. We all humans and mammals and plants on earth have evolved to be. 12 hours daytime and 12 hours nighttime. When we used to get up in the morning, we used to sleep outside, there were no homes. And you opened eye and you saw the sky turn from black to blue. The blue light hits your eye. And both your retina have 5,000 protein cells called melanopsin. Then these melanopsin cells receive blue light, it gives a signal through your nerve cells to hypothalamus, the morning has broken. And hypothalamus has a tiny master gland called pituitary gland. The pituitary gland awakens and then it gives signal to all other glands, to whatever their routine is. So first thing that happens is your adrenal glands release cortisol. Cortisol level goes up. Cortisol is a hormone that makes you want to get up and do things, uh, go run, go jog, go to gym khana, uh, work out, or go to fields and, and plow your fields, the farming. And then it remains high till the sky becomes dark. At that time, it goes down. But there's another hormone counterbalancing called melatonin. Now, melatonin is low during the day and in the night time, melatonin goes up. Okay, so that is what is going on. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I might as well use this chalk. So this is your 6 a.m. And this is your 6 p.m. So 6 a.m., your melatonin, your cortisol, actually it's, yeah, just, and it's remaining high, and then it goes down. And melatonin at this time, the melatonin was high the night time, and begins to come down, and then it goes like this. And the night time goes up again. That is what is happening in your body. Okay. Now what happens is, let's say, so it also depends not only on blue light. Let's say this time you start watching television. So it gets confused that the cortisol is going down. It says, oh, oh, blue light is coming. Let me not go down. It says, okay, let's start going back up again. Or you eat dinner at 9 o'clock. 
because consumption of food is the second most important factor after blue light. He says, oh, oh, food is coming. Maybe I have thought incorrectly. Maybe it is not night time. Goes up again. Okay. And this, so the cortisol went up again and this hormone starts to go down. Okay. So it messes up. And then you go to gym at 10 o'clock. Was oh, oh, this guy is working out, must be daytime. The cortisol goes up again and melatonin goes down. So, so you, your circadian clock is out of balance. And then when you get up, if you're getting up in a heavily draped bedroom, you never see the sky, you, your body clock is running slow. So 70 years ago, the, the, every house used to have only one clock. And, and children went to school at seven o'clock. But the clock was slow by half an hour, they reached late, got punished. You know, the husband, the father, the father went to open the shop at nine o'clock. If he was late, the customers are unhappy, unreliable, he does not open the shop at time, we've been waiting. Or if he went to office, the boss is unhappy. The point is, if your master clock is out of sync, your life goes haywire. Similarly, in human being, when our master clock is out of sync, our life goes haywire. Dr. Sachin Panda has demonstrated in San Diego, Indian doctor, in a very large study, like 10,000 people. And then he noted down their problems, blood pressure, diabetes, to half the people he gave instruction. It was all done on cell phone. Just enter when you are having breakfast, lunch, dinner, when you're going to gym, and when you turned off TV. Only four or five questions. And he found that those people who brought the dinner early and stopped watching TV one hour before bedtime, their blood pressure came down. Same food, nothing else changed. Blood pressure came down. Blood sugar came down. Their cholesterol came down. So half of your healing is done. It's a very powerful tool, please understand. And it's new. 2017, we got a Nobel Prize. Uh, was given to a, three doctors who demonstrated how does this circadian rhythm work? How does a clock in a cell works? Very interesting, okay. Every cell nucleus produces a protein called period, in short, P-E-R, per, and it releases into cytoplasm in the outside the nucleus. In the daytime, your cytoplasm makes a protein called timeless, or TIM, short form for timeless. The TIM takes one molecule of per and goes back into the nucleus. So you have a 12 hour of daytime, 12 hour of nighttime. And the cell knows, so your, your glands know what time we have to release hormones. Okay, so the point is this is more important than we think. And when our sleep gets disturbed, because sleep is when you convert your cache memory into file disk, uh, your short term memory into long term memory. If you have 50 files open on your laptop, they'll slow down. So before you go to sleep, you convert them, put them all into hard disk and clean your cache memory. That is what your brain does every night. Second thing brain does is, brain also needs to be detoxified. Your body is doing detoxifying, detoxification whole day. Brain waits for deep sleep period. Only during deep sleep, it detoxifies the metabolic waste that you have created. If that gets disturbed, these metabolic waste, uh, like beta amyloids, they add up. So they're very tiny, uh, nano, nanoparticles we are talking, but those nanoparticles begin to add up. As they clump together, they disturb certain memory, you know, in, in, your, in your mind, certain memory locations, and you develop dementia. So the causes of mental illnesses is sleep deprivation. Causes of sleep deprivation is not eating at proper time, not doing physical activity at proper time, not getting up at proper time. Things our, our great grandparents knew, but they didn't know the cause. Now we know the science behind it. So these 16, 17, 18, three Nobel Prizes are, are very interesting. So my friend, it just makes the Indian cultural heritage, it proves it to be right. Ekadashi fasting, 
Navratri fasting and get up early and eat your dinner early. There's a custom called Chaw Vihar among Jain people. Any Jain here in this room? Okay, here's one. Yeah, two. So there's a custom called Chaw Vihar. You can attest to that. They have, which says you must eat your first bite 48 minutes after sunrise and your last bite 48 minutes before sunset. Very sensible teaching. Unfortunately, not all Jains are following it. Okay. So, next item is physical exercise. I have already talked about that. There's uh, two issues now are emotional health and spiritual health. They play important role because certain emotions release certain hormones in our body. And these hormones have health effects. Also, the lack of proper diet will cause some hormones not to be developed in sufficient amounts. So it works both ways. So what we know, I mean, we all know that laughter is the best medicine, okay? We all know that. Well, laughter releases certain hormones which are helping your body heal. The second important emotion is unconditional love. Unconditional love is very important. And it's giving, not receiving. Receiving is also important, but giving unconditional love. So, if you can give unconditional, that's why a pet is very useful. Solves many health problems. Many health problems say you have a pet or have young kids around you. You know, a one year, one and a half year old child, he may hit you, but you still love him. Your love is unconditional. Not the love for a 21 year old, then you complain. They say that, they complain like that, you know. Because that is not an unconditional love. That was love with certain expectations. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not talking about that love. I'm talking about unconditional love. Experience that every day. Experience some laughter every day. Yeah. I watched this movie, Angur. Beautiful movie. Or Laurel Hardy. Or Pink Panther. It just makes you laughter. The last item here is the spiritual health. This feeling of gratitude is very important. Again, the gratitude, sense of gratitude, releases certain hormones. Those hormones help your body. That you pray is very important. Who you pray to is irrelevant. It could be your basketball coach, your cricket coach. The person which brings in you that sense of gratitude could be your grandfather, grandmother, great grand uncle, or Lord Krishna, or Sai Baba, or Rama, whatever. See, in Hindu, we have, we call Ish Devta. There are 84,000 Devtas. Whichever one is your favorite, pray to him. Okay. So, so that is what the good health is all about. And I conduct a two month course, bringing first of each month. Today, the new course started. I'll start one on uh, 1st of uh, November. And uh, Dr. Kanan will have uh, the link for the November group. He can pass it on to you. And, and when you attend that, you'll learn the details of this. Of course, this is just the trailer. Thank you so much. I'll take questions now. Before that, I would want uh, Dr. Bellatoni to give a T-shirt from uh, Spoken oh, Tutorial oh, okay. Project. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. We also have a memento. I would invite uh, Dr. Bindu Kumar of Wheels Global, Director, Mental Health. Uh, come here. Let me read this first. So it says, awarded to Lalit Mohan Kapoor. Plant Based Wellness Foundation for the service to humanity by naturally reversing chronic diseases. 1st October 2022, IIT Bombay. You have the logos of Beats and Health Spoken. Thank you so much. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, what I would like to say, all the young people, India is now center of non-communicable diseases. And what he's saying, and I'm a cardiologist, what he has 
started one man show is for prevention of non communicable diseases so i think diet is very important stress reduction is very important and acha sona is very important so heads up to him he has done so much research and hopefully his course which he is starting at iit kanpur you all can opt to join up to course because no matter what you do in the life ultimately health is very important and as a cardiologist what i can say indians are predisposed to premature atherosclerosis diabetes and they all lifestyle disease so time for us to change what he has started this good movement and thanks to him i think i would love to see what he has started the talking tutorial which is very important to reach every town in india and thanks to dr kanan ji i think a lot of people will benefit and you all are instrumental because it is the brightest people so you are a social media king change the world for better place to live thank you dr kanan ji thank you dr kanan ji yeah if there are questions uh yeah go ahead good evening i am dr upendra kinjavadekar i am a president of indian academy of pediatrics so okay. this is the largest body of about 38000 pediatricians first of all congratulations to you for the health spoken tutorial because we pediatricians use your website one of my friends dr rupal dalal is also associated and health spoken tutorial iit mumbai has excellent videos on all child feeding related issues also right from breast feeding to complementary feeding to so on and so forth so my congratulations to you too and sir uh, in continuation with that we are i'll be taking over as president of this body on 1st of january 23 and we are starting a huge program for schools in india for prevention of non communicable diseases which will be titled sankalp sampurna swasthya the I title see. is self explanatory and we would be focusing on five key areas the nutrition exercise screen time sleep and mental health and for 10 to 18 year old we would be adding on substance abuse so i would be really grateful if we can get some inputs from you also on this program also for our pediatric definitely students. definitely i think uh, uh, if uh, you would write to me yes because i uh, the thing is sleep so the thing with sleep is that sleep does not you cannot go to sleep you only prepare yourself to go to sleep sleep comes to you okay so you consciously not sleep it is not possible just like meditation the dhyan you can do dharana you can do concentration dhyan happens similarly you can prepare to go to sleep turn off the light make the room cool put on the blanket but sleep has to come to you and and so for sleep circadian rhythm is a better thing i would like to suggest you that you look into circadian rhythm we can work i can provide the information because once the circadian rhythm is right sleep will come yeah you know it will happen naturally okay. and only one question that i think only one point that you didn't touch upon in your lecture was salt you didn't talk about yeah salt. i didn't talk so, about it there are many things i didn't talk about just, uh, the thing i will answer that yeah. the thing about salt is salt is very healthy okay salt is very healthy which is salt which is in a salt shaker not the hidden salt you know mcdonald ice cream may have lot of hidden salt but you think you are eating something sweet so your body has a satiation mechanism it will not allow you to overeat salt you cannot salt was historically very important salt was used to buy slaves that's where the slang came that that fellow is not worth his salt because if i paid 1 kilo salt for that slave and he does not produce enough that man is not worth his salt the word salary came from salt okay because people were paid in salt so salt historically salt makes the food tasty and there is nothing wrong in eating food which is tasty as long as it is not highly processed because food i am talking the salt is hidden salt should not be hidden okay so if you put salt with a shaker you cannot overeat anybody who has put salt twice in their dal know what i am talking about it happens in our home and then no matter what my wife can do you cannot reduce the dal have you ever thought that you have a one cup of dal which tastes good by itself then you add it to one cup of rice and it still tastes good have you noticed that i mean shouldn't the salt go down to half it doesn't the point is salt is very good for you there's no nothing wrong with salt 
And this whole thing of trying to suppress your symptom, blood pressure, people say, Arey, arey, aapka blood pressure hai, gussa nahi hoi hai. Blood pressure is hypertension. The problem is that plaque formation that I showed you. Gussa hone se plaque formation badega nahi. Salt khane se, the water in your blood increases. So, reducing salt is not a solution to their plaque problem. These are, they don't solve the problem. They only lower the symptoms. That's what I'm trying to say, okay. So, salt is healthy. Uh, it's about exercise. Yeah. Uh, so, earlier or even today, laborers and farmers, etc., they start working after breakfast. They work really hard. But it's always suggested that we exercise. Yeah, anyway. exercise before breakfast is, a, is very healthy because you are already burning fat, okay? So if you walk three miles, then the extra 300 calories of fat will be burned. This fat that will get burned is visceral fat. So normal walking and those kind of exercises, I'm not talking about heavy weight lifting. For your normal walking and light exercises should be done before you eat your breakfast. It's been well established. It's no, no longer a debatable subject. The second time period for exercising is early afternoon. So if you want to do weight lifting and other things, 3, 4 o'clock is a good time. Yeah. Uh, last question, please. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Dr. Sonali Kulkarni. I graduated from IIT Bombay in chemical engineering department. And just to give a short story that I did reversal of my own parents' uh, blood pressure and sugar uh, just by managing diet and the non habits. And then now I engage with, you know, cooking and then, you know, trying to make it simple and then likable because uh, if diet is not tasty and then, you know, easy to make, then nobody will like it. So this is how I do. And uh, regarding B12, my question is about that, that since we cannot get it through any natural foods and then we have to take supplements, then how long do we take it? No, you don't take supplement. Please understand. Okay. Huh, except B12, B12, no other B12. supplement. So B12, you take... 2,000 microgram, one pill a week. So that's enough, or you take 100 micrograms per day. Once a week is enough. Don't buy pills with 5,000, or then you have to take them once every two weeks, you know. So, so that's the answer. Okay. Let's thank the speaker. Sri Lalit Kapoorji, when I first uh, was introduced uh, by Professor Kannan to you, WhatsApp and the email, I was like, okay, let's see <laughs> how it goes. I mean, uh, the first document that Professor Kandan shared with me was dozen daily diet uh, for lifestyle and healthy being. I was like, okay, there are dozen. They may be, you know, simple. Twelve, twelve things. Then I read the document and then I looked at my dinner plate. Because it was that time. And I'm like, okay, there's nothing right in my dinner plate right now. So, I wanted to say when we hear your talk, it's like, you know, not information, it's like thought provoking. You start thinking whether, you know, you are doing the things right or not. And as you do it, for some of them I practiced. It was so useful that, you know, I am uh, very thankful that you were able to come here today. And I... Actually, you know, on behalf of everybody, I think I can say that it is uh, really thought-provoking, the thought, the thought that you have brought to us, that is, you know, what is toxic, uh, whether we are taking omega-3 or omega-6, P12 is in water, and that's, you know, we filter the water, it's gone. How do we, you know, there are many things that you told us, and we are sure that many of us will go back home and open our fridge and kitchen and see, okay, we need to update ourselves in the kitchen. So, uh, thank you so much Lelichi and your team and all of you who are present over here because the first step of, uh, you know, some of you are already into this, uh, this plan, his lifestyle plan, but the first step for coming here and attending this workshop and I'm seeing many hands, hands up to ask questions and we don't have time. So, thank you for your participation. Thank you so much. Thank you to Spoken Tutorial Project, Wheels Foundation and everybody who is here. Thank you so much. We will now show samples of spoken tutorial just for a few minutes, then we will, uh, so that you know.
आहार और जीवन शैली पर रोज के लिए दर्जन सलाह पर बने स्पोकन ट्यूटोरियल में आपका स्वागत है इस ट्यूटोरियल में हम जानेंगे बेहतर स्वास्थ्य के लिए अनुशंसित आहार और जीवन शैली खाना और जीवन जीने का तरीका दोनों अच्छा स्वास्थ्य बनाए रखने में बहुत जरूरी होते हैं स्वस्थ जीवन को बनाए रखने के लिए 12 तरीकों के भोजन और जीने के तरीके में बदलाव सुझाया गया है हर रोज उनका पालन करें और आप देखेंगे कि दवाओं की जरूरत कम हो जाएगी इस तरह आपकी दवाइयाँ बंद हो जाएंगी तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं आपके संपूर्ण स्वास्थ्य के लिए रोज के दर्जन सलाह आगे बताए गए हैं सबसे पहला है डेयरी और पशु आधारित उत्पादों का इस्तेमाल ना करना इसका मतलब है पशु या कोई समुद्री खाना नहीं खाना ना ही अंडे खाना पशु आधारित दूध या दूध उत्पाद भी नहीं लेना यानी दही का सेवन ना करें पनीर मक्खन या कोई और दूध उत्पाद भी नहीं पर दानों से बना दूध या पौधे आधारित उत्पादों का इस्तेमाल किया जा सकता है जैसे कि नारियल का दूध बादाम का दूध जई का दूध और मूंगफली का दही दूसरा है परिष्कृत या अत्यधिक प्रसंस्कृत चीजों को नहीं खाना चाहिए यानी कोई तेल नहीं और चीनी नहीं हालांकि कुछ लोगों के लिए कुछ उपवाद हैं जैसे कि वे लोग जो किसी पुरानी बीमारी के लिए कोई दवा नहीं ले रहे हैं जो लोग बीमारी को ठीक नहीं करना चाहते हैं या जो इसे वैसे ही बनाए रखना चाहते हैं, वे हर रोज ज्यादा से ज्यादा दो चम्मच चीनी और घी या तेल का इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं तीसरा है आपको सभी पांच खाद्य समूहों में से खाना चाहिए पहले दो खाद्य समूह फल और सब्जियां हैं फलियां और दालें तीसरे समूह में आते हैं चौथा खाद्य समूह अनाज है दाने और बीज पांचवें समूह के हैं जड़ी बूटियों और मसालों को ज्यादा लेना सुझाया जाता है और इन्हें नियमित रूप से खाना चाहिए आपके रोज के कैलोरी सेवन का पांचवा हिस्सा हर एक खाद्य समूह में से खाया जाना चाहिए एक व्यक्ति का हर रोज का कैलोरी सेवन उम्र लिंग और शारीरिक गतिविधि के साथ बदलता रहता है आप हर रोज अपनी मर्जी से हर एक खाद्य समूह से अलग अलग तरह की चीज ले सकते हैं जल्दी से वजन कम करने के लिए दाने और बीज के समूह को कम मात्रा में खाना सुझाया जाता है न्यूनतम अनुशंसित आपके रोज के कैलोरी सेवन का पांचवा हिस्सा है चौथा रोजाना फल और सब्जियों को खाने के बारे में है अपने शरीर के वजन का कम से कम एक प्रतिशत फलों के रूप में खाएं। साथ ही अपने शरीर के वजन का कम से कम एक प्रतिशत रोजाना सब्जियों के रूप में खाएं। इसका आधा हिस्सा आपके इलाके में मौसम के हिसाब से मिलने वाली हरी पत्तेदार सब्जियों का होना चाहिए आपको स्थानीय और मौसमी बेरों को भी शामिल करना चाहिए किसी बीमारी को रोकने या वजन कम करने के लिए आपको इस समूह का ज्यादा सेवन करना चाहिए पांचवा तीन जरूरी पोषक तत्व जरूर लें जैसे कि विटामिन डी थ्री ओमेगा थ्री फैटी एसिड और विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व सूर्य से विटामिन डी थ्री लेना सबसे बेहतर तरीका है कमी होने पर डी थ्री सप्लीमेंट ले यदि आपको ज्यादा धूप ना मिलती हो तो आप सप्लीमेंट का सेवन कर सकते हैं सुनिश्चित करें कि आपको पर्याप्त ओमेगा थ्री मिल रहा है दाने और बीज ओमेगा थ्री के अच्छे स्रोत हैं। कम से कम एक बड़ा चम्मच पिसे हुए अलसी ले आप रोजाना चिया के बीज भी खा सकते हैं साथ ही रोजाना पांच अखरोट खाएं। यदि आप बीमारी दूर करना चाहते हैं, तो आप इसे ज्यादा खा सकते हैं हर हफ्ते एक ब्राजील अखरोट लेने की कोशिश करें पुरुषों को कद्दू के बीज खाने की सलाह 
दी जाती है विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व सप्लीमेंट भी लें यह 50 से 100 माइक्रोग्राम की हर रोज की खुराक हो सकती है या फिर आप हर हफ्ते 2000 माइक्रोग्राम ले सकते हैं कोई भी सप्लीमेंट लेने से पहले डॉक्टर से सलाह लेना ना भूलें तीनों जरूरी पोषक तत्वों से ज्यादा से ज्यादा चीजों का सेवन करें छठा अपने शरीर में पानी की कमी ना होने दें सुबह सबसे पहले कम से कम आधा लीटर गुनगुना पानी पिए यह आपको दांतों को ब्रश करने से पहले करना चाहिए रात के खाने के एक घंटे के बाद एक गिलास पानी पिए साथ ही सोने से पहले एक गिलास पानी जरूर पिए बाकी के दिन में जितना हो सके पानी का सेवन करें इसका मतलब है पानी से भरपूर ताजे फल और सब्जियां खाएं उदाहरण के लिए तरबूज खरबूजा मौसम्बी संतरा खीरा टमाटर आदि सातवां हर रोज 16 बटा आठ आंतरायिक उपवास करें यानी एक दिन में 16 घंटे उपवास और 8 घंटे खाने का पालन करें इसे करने के लिए धीरे धीरे शुरू करें अपने खाने के समय को धीरे धीरे 8 से 10 घंटे तक कम करें रात का खाना सोने से कम से कम तीन घंटे पहले खाएं। कोशिश करें खाना सूर्यास्त से पहले ही खा लें। आंतरायिक उपवास को इसी श्रृंखला के एक अन्य ट्यूटोरियल में समझाया गया है ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए कृपया हमारी वेबसाइट पर जाएं। आठवां है चिकित्सीय जल उपवास करना इसका मतलब है कि उपवास करते समय आपको पानी के अलावा कुछ भी नहीं लेना चाहिए हर दो हफ्ते में 36 घंटों का उपवास करें साथ ही 9 दिन का जल उपवास साल में एक या दो बार जरूर करें उन 9 दिनों में सूर्यास्त से पहले हर दिन 500 कैलोरी से कम प्रोटीन वाला खाना खाएं। सुनिश्चित करें कि इस खाने में प्रोटीन 5 प्रतिशत से कम हो नौवीं सलाह सक्रिय रहने की है दिन में कुछ समय के लिए बाहर जाएं, भले ही धूप ना हो रोजाना दस हजार कदम या उससे ज्यादा चलें, कार्डियो और स्ट्रेचिंग जैसे कुछ व्यायाम करें अपने तनाव को दूर करने वाले कुछ व्यायाम भी करने चाहिए जैसे कि चलना दौड़ना तैरना साइकिल चलाना और नृत्य करना याद रखें कि रात में व्यायाम ना करें दसवीं सलाह रोजाना कम से कम सात से नौ घंटे सोने की है यदि आप सप्ताह के दिनों में ज्यादा सो नहीं पा रहे हैं तो सप्ताह की छुट्टियों में अच्छी नींद लें। सोने से कम से कम एक घंटे पहले सभी नीली रोशनी उत्सर्जक उपकरणों को बंद कर दें। उपकरण जैसे मोबाइल फोन टीवी और कंप्यूटर आप अपने उपकरणों के बाहरी तरफ फिल्टर स्क्रीन भी लगा सकते हैं यह नीली रोशनी के असर को कम करेगा नीली रोशनी को कम करने के लिए आप अपने उपकरण के सेटिंग्स को भी कम या ज्यादा कर सकते हैं ग्यारवा है अपने परिवार और दोस्तों से प्यार करना उनके साथ जुड़े रहें। बारवा नियमित रूप से प्रार्थना करें और दिल में अच्छी भावना रखें ये सब जरूरी बदलाव लाना शुरू करने के लिए इस एक अंगूठे के नियम का पालन करें सुनिश्चित करें कि कुल कैलोरी का कम से कम आधा हिस्सा बिना पके खाने से आए यह अपने आप हो जाएगा जब आप आगे दी गई सलाह का पालन करेंगे अपने आहार में कच्चे खाने की मात्रा को बढ़ाने के लिए कुछ अंकुरित फलियां खाएं। दूसरा सूखी सब्जी या तरी वाली सब्जी को बिना घी या तेल में पकाएं। आगे कुछ सलाह दिए गए हैं पिसी हुई सरसों या दाने से बने मक्खन जैसे कि मूंगफली या काजू का मक्खन इस्तेमाल करें खाद्य पदार्थों को सेकें या 
तलने के बजाय एयर फ्रायर का इस्तेमाल करें आवोकाडो में 80 प्रतिशत फैट होता है तो पौष्टिक पराठे बनाने के लिए उन्हें आटे में मिला लें। प्याज और मसाले पानी के कुछ बड़े चम्मच में भूने या जिस पानी में सब्जियों को उबाला हो उस पानी का इस्तेमाल करें एक अन्य ट्यूटोरियल में बिना घी या तेल से बनी सब्जी को पकाने का तरीका बताया गया है कृपया इसी श्रृंखला में हमारे अन्य ट्यूटोरियल देखें कोई प्रतिबंध नहीं है तरह तरह के खाद्य पदार्थ खाएं। वह सब कुछ जो आपको पसंद है और वो भी जो आपको पसंद नहीं है जितना आपका मन करे उतना ही खाएं, लेकिन ज्यादा ना खाएं। खाने की मात्रा पर नियंत्रण जरूरी नहीं है इस आहार का पालन करने के छह महीने बाद आप अपने शरीर में बदलाव महसूस करेंगे इन बदलाव के हिसाब से अपना खाना और उसकी मात्रा चुने अब यह ट्यूटोरियल यहीं समाप्त होता है आईआईटी बॉम्बे से मैं बेला टोनी आपसे विदा लेती हूँ हमसे जुड़ने के लिए धन्यवाद वनकम मुख्य पंग वह आरोक्य पन्द्र उड़ा उदारण उदारण मेल मूंवर दिनसरी उलोरी उ दिनसरी 
நீங்கள் உள்ளூர் மற்றும் பருவகால பெரி பழங்களை சேர்க்க வேண்டும் ஒரு நோயை மாற்றி திருப்ப அல்லது எடை குறைக்க நீங்கள் இந்த குழுவில் இருந்து அதிகமாக உட்கொள்ள வேண்டும் ஐந்தாவது மூன்று முக்கிய ஊட்டச்சத்துக்களை கவனியுங்கள் அதாவது வைட்டமின் டி மூன்று ஒமேகா மூன்று மற்றும் வைட்டமின் பி பன்னிரண்டு சூரிய ஒளியில் இருந்து வைட்டமின் டி மூன்றை பெறுவது சிறந்தது உங்களுக்கு குறைபாடு இருந்தால் மட்டுமே டி மூன்று மருந்துகளை எடுத்துக்கொள்ளுங்கள் போதுமான சூரிய ஒளி கிடைக்கவில்லை என்றால் கூட அதை எடுத்துக்கொள்ளலாம் போதுமான ஒமேகா மூன்றை பெறுகிறீர்களா என்பதை உறுதிப்படுத்திக் கொள்ளுங்கள் கொட்டைகள் மற்றும் விதைகள் ஒமேகா மூன்று நிறைந்தவை அரைத்த ஆலி விதையை குறைந்தது ஒரு தேக்கரண்டி சாப்பிடுங்கள் நீங்கள் தினமும் சியா விதைகளை சாப்பிடலாம் மேலும் தினமும் ஐந்து வால்நட்டுகளை சாப்பிடுங்கள் நீங்கள் நோயை மாற்றி திருப்ப முயற்சிக்கிறீர்கள் என்றால் அதிகமாக சாப்பிடலாம் ஒவ்வொரு வாரமும் ஒரு பிரேசில் நட்டை சாப்பிட முயற்சிக்கவும் ஆண்கள் பூசணி விதைகளை கண்டிப்பாக உண்ண பரிந்துரைக்கப்படுகிறது வைட்டமின் பி பன்னிரண்டு மருந்துகளையும் எடுத்துக்கொள்ளுங்கள் இது தினசரி டோஸ் ஐம்பது முதல் நூறு மைக்ரோகிராம் வரை இருக்கலாம் மாற்றாக ஒவ்வொரு வாரமும் இரண்டாயிரம் மைக்ரோகிராம் ஆகலாம் மருந்துகளை எடுத்துக்கொள்வதற்கு முன் மருத்துவரை அணுக மறக்காதீர்கள் மூன்று முக்கிய ஊட்டச்சத்துக்களிலிருந்து பல வகைகளை உண்ணுங்கள் ஆறாவது உங்கள் உடலை எப்பொழுதும் நீரோற்றமாக வைத்திருங்கள் காலையில் குறைந்தபட்சம் அரை லிட்டர் வெதுவெதுப்பான நீரை முதலில் அருந்தவும் பல் துலக்குவதற்கு முன்பே இதை செய்ய வேண்டும் இரவு உணவுக்கு பிறகு ஒரு மணி நேரம் கழித்து ஒரு கிளாஸ் தண்ணீர் குடிக்கவும் மேலும் படுக்கைக்கு செல்வதற்கு முன் ஒரு கிளாஸ் தண்ணீர் குடிக்கவும் நாள் முழுவதும் முடிந்தவரை உங்கள் தண்ணீரை சாப்பிடுங்கள் இதன் பொருள் தண்ணீர் நிறைந்த பழங்கள் மற்றும் காய்கறிகளை சாப்பிடுவது உதாரணமாக தர்பூசணி முலாம்பழம் சாத்துக்கொடி ஆரஞ்சு பழம் வெள்ளரி தக்காளி போன்றவை ஏழாவது தினமும் பதினாறு விகிதம் எட்டு என்ற இடைப்பட்ட உண்ணாவிரதத்தை பயிற்சி செய்யுங்கள் அதாவது ஒரு நாளில் பதினாறு மணி நேர உண்ணாவிரதத்தையும் எட்டு மணி நேர உண்ணுவதையும் பின்பற்றுங்கள் இதில் வெற்றி பெற மெதுவாக தொடங்கவும் உங்கள் உண்ணும் நேரத்தை படிப்படியாக எட்டு முதல் பத்து மணி நேரமாக குறைக்கவும் இரவு உணவை உறங்குவதற்கு குறைந்தது மூன்று மணி நேரத்திற்கு முன் முடிந்தால் சூரிய அஸ்தமனத்திற்கு முன் முடிக்கவும் இடைப்பட்ட உண்ணாவிரதம் இதே தொடரின் மற்றொரு டுட்டோரியலில் விளக்கப்பட்டுள்ளது மேலும் விவரங்களுக்கு எங்கள் வலைதளத்தை பார்வையிடவும் எட்டாவது நீர் விரதங்கள் செய்யுங்கள் அதாவது விரதத்தின் போது தண்ணீரை தவிர வேறு எதையும் உட்கொள்ளக்கூடாது இரண்டு வாரங்களுக்கு ஒரு முறை முப்பத்தி ஆறு மணி நேரம் உண்ணாவிரதம் இருங்கள் மேலும் ஒவ்வொரு வருடமும் ஒரு முறை அல்லது இரண்டு முறை ஒன்பது நாட்கள் தண்ணீர் விரதம் செய்யவும் ஒன்பது நாட்களில் சூரிய அஸ்தமனத்திற்கு முன் ஒவ்வொரு நாளும் ஒரு ஐநூறு கலோரி குறைந்த புரத உணவை சாப்பிடுங்கள் இந்த உணவில் புரதம் ஐந்து சதவிகிதத்திற்கும் குறைவாக இருப்பதை உறுதிப்படுத்தவும் ஒன்பதாவது பரிந்துரை சுறுசுறுப்பாக இருக்க வேண்டும் சூரியன் இல்லாவிட்டாலும் பகல் நேரத்தில் சிறிது நேரம் வெளியே செல்லுங்கள் தினமும் பத்தாயிரம் படிகள் அல்லது அதற்கு மேல் நடக்கவும் கார்டியோ மற்றும் ஸ்ட்ரெச்சிங் போன்ற சில பயிற்சிகளை செய்யுங்கள் நீங்கள் சில மன அழுத்தத்தை குறைக்கும் பயிற்சிகளையும் செய்ய வேண்டும் உதாரணமாக நடைப்பயிற்சி ஓட்டம் நீச்சல் சைக்கிள் ஓட்டுதல் மற்றும் நடனம் இரவில் உடற்பயிற்சி செய்ய வேண்டாம் என்பதை நினைவில் கொள்ளுங்கள் பத்தாவது பரிந்துரை தினசரி குறைந்தது ஏழு முதல் ஒன்பது மணி நேரம் தூங்க வேண்டும் வாரத்தில் அதிகம் தூங்க முடியாவிட்டால் வார இறுதிகளில் நன்றாக தூங்குங்கள் உறங்கச் செல்வதற்கு ஒரு மணி நேரத்திற்கு முன் அனைத்து நீல ஒளி வெளியிடும் சாதனங்களை அணைக்கவும் மொபைல் போன் தொலைக்காட்சி மற்றும் கணினி போன்ற சாதனங்கள் உங்கள் சாதனங்களில் வெளிப்புற ஃபில்டர் ஸ்கிரீனையும் நீங்கள் பயன்படுத்தலாம்
இது நீல ஒளியின் தாக்கத்தை குறைக்கும் நீல ஒளியின் தாக்கத்தை குறைக்க உங்கள் சாதன அமைப்புகளையும் நீங்கள் சரி செய்யலாம் பதினொன்றாவது உங்கள் குடும்பத்தினரையும் நண்பர்களையும் மனதார நேசிக்கவும் அவர்களுடன் இணைந்திருங்கள் பன்னிரெண்டாவது தவறாமல் இறைவனை வழிபடவும் மற்றும் நன்றியுணர்வு நிறைந்த நேர்மையான அணுகுமுறையை கொண்டிருக்க வேண்டும் முக்கியமான மாற்றங்களை செய்ய இந்த ஒரு விதியை பின்பற்றவும் மொத்த கலோரிகளில் பாதியாவது சமைக்கப்படாத உணவில் இருந்து வருகிறது என்பதை உறுதிப்படுத்திக் கொள்ளுங்கள் கொடுக்கப்பட்ட பரிந்துரைக்கப்பட்ட வழிகாட்டுதல்களை பின்பற்றும் போது இது இயற்கையாகவே நடக்கும் உங்கள் உணவில் சமைக்கப்படாத உணவின் சதவிகிதத்தை அதிகரிக்க முளைத்த பயிர்களை சாப்பிடுங்கள் இரண்டாவதாக காய்கறிகள் அல்லது பொறியல் கூட்டுகளை நெய் அல்லது எண்ணெய் இல்லாமல் சமைக்கவும் இங்கே சில பரிந்துரைகளை பார்ப்போம் அரைத்த கடுகு விதைகள் அல்லது வேர்க்கடலை அல்லது முந்திரியின் வெண்ணெய் போன்றவைகளை பயன்படுத்தவும் உணவுகளை பேக் செய்யுங்கள் அல்லது எண்ணெயில் பொறிப்பதற்கு பதிலாக ஏர் ஃப்ரையர்களை பயன்படுத்துங்கள் அவகேடோவில் எண்பது சதவிகிதம் கொழுப்பு உள்ளது ஆரோக்கியமான ரொட்டிகளை செய்ய இதை மாவில் சேர்த்து பிசையவும் வெங்காயம் மற்றும் மசாலா பொருட்களை வதக்க ஒரு சில தேக்கரண்டி தண்ணீர் அல்லது காய்கறி தண்ணீரை பயன்படுத்தவும் நெய் அல்லது எண்ணெய் இல்லாமல் உணவை எப்படி சமைப்பது என்பது சமையல் செய்முறை டுட்டோரியல்களில் விளக்கப்பட்டுள்ளது இதே தொடரின் எங்கள் மற்ற டுட்டோரியல்களை பார்க்கவும் எந்த கட்டுப்பாடுகளும் இல்லாமல் விதவிதமான உணவுகளை உண்ணுங்கள் நீங்கள் விரும்பும் அனைத்தும் மற்றும் நீங்கள் விரும்பாத சில நீங்கள் விரும்பும் அளவுக்கு சாப்பிடுங்கள் ஆனால் அளவுக்கு மீறி அதிகமாக சாப்பிட வேண்டாம் பகுதி கட்டுப்பாடு தேவையில்லை இந்த உணவு முறையை பின்பற்றி ஆறு மாதங்களுக்கு பிறகு உங்கள் உடலின் உள்ளுணர்வை நம்புங்கள் இந்த உள்ளுணர்வின் அடிப்படையில் உங்கள் உணவையும் அதன் அளவையும் தேர்வு செய்யவும் இத்துடன் இந்த டுட்டோரியலின் முடிவுக்கு நாம் வந்துவிட்டோம் நன்றி மஞ்சி ஆகாரம் மரியு ஜீவன சைலி கொருக்கு மனம் ரோஜு பாட்டின்சாவசின பன்னெண்டு சிபாரசுல பை ஈ ஸ்போகன் டுடோரியல் கு ஸ்வாகதம் ஈ டுடோரியல் லோ மனம் வீட்டின் குறின்சி நேச்குண்டாம் மெருகைன ஆரோகியம் கொருக்கு சிபாரச் செய்வடின ஆகாரம் மரியு ஜீவன சைலி மஞ்சி ஆரோகியானி காபாடுக்கோடம்லோ ஆகாரம் மரியு ஜீவன சைலி ரெண்டு கீலக பாத்திரனும் போஷிஸ்தாயி ஆரோகிய கரமேன ஜீவிதானி கொன்சாகின்சடானுக்கி ஆகாரம் மரியு ஜீவன சைலிலோ பன்னெண்டு ரக்கால மார்ப்புலு அனேவி சிபாரச் செய்வட்டாயி பிரதி ரோஜு வடினி அனுசரின்சண்டி அப்பு மீக்கு மந்துல யொக்க அவசரம் அனேதி தக்கடான்னி பாட்டின்சால்சினா ரோஜுவாரி பன்னெண்டு சிபாரச்லு அனைதி இக்கட உன்னாயி முதட்டிதி பால உத்பத்துலு மரியு ஜெந்து ஆதாரித்த உத்பத்துலனு தினக்கொடுது அண்டை தினி அர்தம் ஜெந்துவில ஆகாரம் வத்து சமுத்ருப்பு ஆகாரம் வத்து அலாகே குட்லு வத்து ஜெந்துவில ஆதாரித்த பாலு லேத பால தீஸ்கோக்கோடுதனி அர்த்தம் வீடிக்கு பிரத்தியாம் நாயங்க கிஞ்சலா ஆதாரித்த பாலு லேத மொக்கல ஆதாரித்த உத்பத்துலனு உப்பியுகின்ச வச்சு உதாகரணக்கு கொப்பரி பாலு பாதம் பாலு ஓட்ஸ் பாலு மரியு வேரு சினக பால பெருகு ரெண்டவதி சுத்தி சேசினுவி கொண்ணி மினகா இம்புலு அனைவி உன்னாயி உதாகரணக்கு திர்க்ககாலிக அனாரோக்யம் கோசம் எடுவன்டி மந்துலனு தீஸ்கோனி வியக்துலு வியாதி தோரம் காவலி அனுக்குனே வாரு லேதா எலா உன்னதி அலாகே பெரககுண்டா உண்டாலனி கோருக்குனே வாரு வாரு பிரதி ரோஜு மிறு மொத்தம் 5 ஆகார வர்க்கால நுண்டி ஆகாரானி தீஸ்கோவாலு. மொதட்டி ரெண்டு ஆகார வர்க்காலு அனேவி பாண்டலு மரியு கோரகாயிலு. பீன்ஸ் மரியு சிக்குள்ளு அனேவி முடவ வர்க்கானிக்கி செந்துதாய். நால்கவ ஆகார வர்க்கம் அனேதி தானியாலு. கிஞ்சலு மரியு வித்தனாலு 
మూలికలు మరియు సుగంధ ద్రవ్యాలు అనేవి బాగా సిఫారసు చేయబడ్డాయి వీటిని క్రమం తప్పకుండా తినాలి మీకు రోజుకు కావలసిన కేలరీలలో ఐదవ వంతుని ప్రతి ఆహార వర్గం నుండి తప్పనిసరిగా తినాలి ఒక వ్యక్తి రోజువారీ తీసుకోవలసిన కేలరీలు అనేవి వయస్సుతో పాటు అలాగే స్త్రీ పురుషులకు మరియు చేసే శారీరక శ్రమతోనూ మారుతూ ఉంటాయి మీరు ప్రతిరోజు మీ ఎంపిక ప్రకారం ప్రతి ఆహార వర్గం నుండి వివిధ రకాల పదార్థాలను తీసుకోవచ్చు వేగంగా బరువు తగ్గడానికి గింజలు మరియు విత్తనాల వర్గం నుండి సిఫారసు చేయబడిన వాటిని కనీస మొత్తంలో తినండి మీరు రోజువారీ తీసుకునే కేలరీల యొక్క ఐదవ వంతు అనేది కనీస మొత్తంగా సిఫారసు చేయబడింది రోజు పండ్లు మరియు కూరగాయలు తినడం అనేది నాలుగవ సిఫారసు మీ శరీర బరువులో కనీసం ఒక శాతాన్ని పండ్లుగా తినండి అలాగే రోజు మీ శరీర బరువులో కనీసం ఒక శాతాన్ని కూరగాయలుగా తినండి అందులో సగం స్థానికంగా మరియు కాలానుగుణంగా లభించే ఆకుకూరలు ఉండాలి అదే విధంగా మీరు తప్పనిసరిగా స్థానికంగా మరియు కాలానుగుణంగా లభించే బెర్రీలను కూడా చేర్చాలి ఒక వ్యాధి తగ్గేలా చేయడానికి లేదా బరువు తగ్గడానికి మీరు ఈ వర్గం నుండి ఎక్కువగా తీసుకోవాలి ఇది ఐదవది మూడు కీలక పోషకాల కోసం దీన్ని చూడండి అవి వైటమిన్ డి త్రీ ఒమేగా త్రీ మరియు వైటమిన్ డి సూర్యుని నుండి వైటమిన్ డి త్రీని పొందడం అనేది ఉత్తమం మీకు లోపం ఉన్నప్పుడు మాత్రమే డి త్రీ సప్లిమెంట్ ను తీసుకోండి ఒకవేళ మీకు తగినంత సూర్యకాంతి రానప్పుడు కూడా మీరు దాన్ని తీసుకోవచ్చు మీరు తగినంతగా ఒమేగా త్రీని పొందుతున్నారని నిర్ధారించుకోండి గింజలు మరియు విత్తనాలు అనేవి ఒమేగా త్రీ యొక్క మంచి వనరులు కనీసం ఒక టేబుల్ స్పూన్ నేల అవస గింజలను తినండి మీరు ప్రతిరోజు చియా విత్తనాలను కూడా తినవచ్చు అలాగే రోజు ఐదు వాల్నట్లను తీసుకోవాలి ఒకవేళ మీరు వ్యాధిని దూరం చేసుకోవడానికి ప్రయత్నిస్తున్నట్లయితే మీరు ఇంకా ఎక్కువ తినవచ్చు ప్రతి వారం ఒక బ్రెజిల్ నట్ ను తీసుకోవడానికి ప్రయత్నించండి పురుషులు తప్పనిసరిగా గుమ్మడికాయ గింజలను తినాలని సిఫారసు చేయబడింది వైటమిన్ బి ట్వెల్వ్ సప్లిమెంట్ ను కూడా తీసుకోండి దీన్ని రోజు యాభై నుండి వంద మైక్రోగ్రాముల మోతాదులో తీసుకోవచ్చు ప్రత్యామ్నాయంగా తీసుకోవడానికైతే ఇది ప్రతి వారం రెండు వేల మైక్రోగ్రాములు తీసుకోవచ్చు ఏదైనా సప్లిమెంట్లను తీసుకునే ముందు వైద్యుడిని సంప్రదించాలని గుర్తుంచుకోండి ఈ మూడు కీలక పోషకాల నుండి వీలైనన్ని ఎక్కువ రకాలను తినండి ఆరవది మీ శరీరంలో నీటి శాతం తగ్గకుండా చూసుకోండి ఉదయం పూట మొదటి పనిగా కనీసం అర లీటర్ గోరువెచ్చని నీటిని తాగాలి మీరు మీ పళ్ళు కూడా తోముకోకముందే ఇది చేయాలి రాత్రి భోజనం చేసిన గంట తర్వాత ఒక గ్లాసు నీరు త్రాగాలి అలాగే పడుకునే ముందు ఒక గ్లాసు నీళ్లు తప్పకుండా తాగాలి మిగతా రోజంతా కూడా మీకు వీలైనంత వరకు నీటిని తింటుండాలి అంటే నీరు అధికంగా ఉండే తాజా పండ్లు మరి కూరగాయలు తినమని దీని అర్థం ఉదాహరణకు పుచ్చకాయ కర్బూజ తీపి నిమ్మ నారింజ దోసకాయ టమాటా మొదలైనవి ఏడవది ప్రతిరోజు పదహారు బై ఎనిమిది అంటే మధ్య మధ్యన కాసేపు ఉపవాసాన్ని పాటించండి అంటే ఒక రోజులో పదహారు గంటల ఉపవాసం మరియు ఎనిమిది గంటలు ఆహారాన్ని తీసుకోవడాన్ని అనుసరించండి దీన్ని సాధించడానికి నెమ్మదిగా ప్రారంభించండి మీ ఆహార వ్యవధిని క్రమంగా ఎనిమిది నుండి పది గంటలకు తగ్గించండి నిద్రపోవడానికి కనీసం మూడు గంటల ముందు మీ రాత్రి భోజనాన్ని ముగించండి సూర్యాస్తమయానికి ముందైతే ఇంకా మంచిది మధ్య మధ్యన చేసే ఉపవాసం గురించి ఇదే సిరీస్ యొక్క మరొక ట్యూటోరియల్లో వివరించబడింది మరిన్ని వివరాల కోసం దయచేసి మా వెబ్సైట్ ను సందర్శించండి ఎనిమిదవది వైద్య చికిత్స సంబంధిత నీటి ఉపవాసాలు చేయడం అంటే ఉపవాస సమయంలో నీరు తప్ప మరేమీ తీసుకోకూడదు అని దీని అర్థం ప్రతి రెండు వారాలలో ముప్పై ఆరు గంటల ఉపవాసం ఉండండి అలాగే ప్రతి సంవత్సరం ఒకటి లేదా రెండు సార్లు తొమ్మిది రోజుల నీటి ఉపవాసం చేయండి ఈ తొమ్మిది రోజుల సమయంలో ప్రతిరోజు సూర్యాస్తమయానికి ముందు తక్కువ ప్రోటీన్లు గల ఒక ఐదు వందల క్యాలరీల భోజనాన్ని తీసుకోండి ఈ భోజనంలో ప్రోటీన్ అనేది ఐదు శాతం కంటే తక్కువగా ఉండేలా చూసుకోండి తొమ్మిదవ సిఫారసు అనేది 
చురుకుగా ఉండడం బయట ఎండలేకపోయినా కూడా పగటిపూట కొంత సమయం పాటు బయటకు వెళ్ళండి రోజు పదివేల అడుగులు లేదా అంతకంటే ఎక్కువ దూరం నడవండి కార్డియో మరియు స్ట్రెచ్చింగ్ వంటి కొన్ని వ్యాయామాలను చేయండి అలాగే మీరు కొన్ని ఒత్తిడిని తగ్గించే వ్యాయామాలు కూడా చేయాలి ఉదాహరణకు నడవడం పరిగెత్తడం ఈత కొట్టడం సైకిల్ తొక్కడం మరియు నృత్యం చేయడం రాత్రిపూట వ్యాయామం చేయకూడదని గుర్తుంచుకోండి పదో సిఫారసు అనేది రోజు కనీసం ఏడు నుండి తొమ్మిది గంటల సేపు నిద్రపోవడం ఒకవేళ మీరు వారంలో ఎక్కువగా నిద్రపోలేకపోతే అప్పుడు వారాంతాల్లో బాగా నిద్రపోండి నిద్రపోవడానికి కనీసం ఒక గంట ముందు నీలి రంగు కాంతిని విడుదల చేసి అన్ని పరికరాలను స్విచ్ ఆఫ్ చేసేయండి అవి ఇటువంటి పరికరాలు మొబైల్ ఫోన్ టెలివిజన్ మరియు కంప్యూటర్ మీరు మీ పరికరాలలో బయట ఉండే ఫిల్టర్ స్క్రీన్ ను కూడా పెట్టుకోవచ్చు ఇది నీలి రంగు కాంతి గల లైట్ యొక్క ప్రభావాన్ని తగ్గిస్తుంది ఈ లైట్ యొక్క ప్రభావాన్ని తగ్గించడానికి మీరు మీ పరికరం యొక్క సెట్టింగ్లను కూడా సర్దుబాటు చేసుకోవచ్చు పదకొండవది మీ కుటుంబాన్ని మరియు మీ స్నేహితులను ఎటువంటి షరతులు లేకుండా ప్రేమించండి వారితో సన్నిహితంగా ఉండండి పన్నెండవది క్రమం తప్పకుండా ప్రార్థన చేయడం మరియు కృతజ్ఞతతో కూడిన సానుకూల దృక్పథాన్ని కలిగి ఉండడం ముఖ్యమైన ఈ మార్పులను చేయడం ప్రారంభించడానికి ఈ బొటనవేలు నియమాన్ని అనుసరించండి తీసుకునే మొత్తం క్యాలరీలలో కనీసం సగం వండని ఆహారం నుండి వస్తుందని నిర్ధారించుకోండి మీరు ఇక్కడ ఇచ్చిన సిఫారస్ మార్గదర్శకాలను అనుసరించడం వలన ఇదంతా సహజంగా జరుగుతుంది మీ ఆహారంలో పచ్చి ఆహార శాతాన్ని పెంచుకోవడానికి కొన్ని మొలకెత్తిన బీన్స్ ను తినండి రెండవది కూరగాయలు లేదా కూరలను నెయ్యి లేదా నూనె లేకుండా ఉడికించండి ఇక్కడ మరికొన్ని సూచనలు ఉన్నాయి నేల ఆవాలు లేదా వేరుశనగ లేదా జీడిపప్పు వంటి గింజల నుండి చేసిన వెన్నలను ఉపయోగించండి ఆహార పదార్థాలను నూనెలో వేయించడానికి బదులుగా ఎయిర్ ఫ్రయ్యర్లను ఉపయోగించండి అవకాడోలో ఎనభై శాతం కొవ్వు ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి ఆరోగ్యకరమైన పరాఠాలను తయారు చేయడానికి వాటిని పిండిలో కలపండి కొన్ని టేబుల్ స్పూన్ల నీటిలో ఉల్లిపాయలు మరియు మసాలా దినుసులు వేయండి లేదా కూరగాయలు ఉడికించిన నీటినైనా ఉపయోగించండి నెయ్యి లేదా నూనె లేకుండా కూరలు ఎలా ఉడికించాలి అనేది రెసిపీ ట్యూటోరియల్స్ లో వివరించబడింది దయచేసి అదే సిరీస్ లోని మా ఇతర ట్యూటోరియల్లను చూడండి ఎలాంటి ఆంక్షలు లేవు రకరకాల ఆహారాలను తినండి మీకు నచ్చినవి మరియు కొన్ని మీకు నచ్చనివి కూడా ఇలా అన్నీ తినాలి మీకు తోచినంత నచ్చినంత తినండి కాని అతిగా తినవద్దు భాగ నియంత్రణ అనేది అవసరం లేదు ఈ ఆహార విధానాన్ని ఆరు నెలలు అనుసరించిన తర్వాత మీ శరీరం యొక్క స్వభావంపై ఆధారపడి నడుచుకోండి ఈ ప్రవృత్తుల ఆధారంగా మీరు మీ ఆహారాన్ని మరియు దాని యొక్క పరిమాణాన్ని ఎంచుకోండి ఇది మనల్ని ఈ ట్యూటోరియల్ యొక్క చివరకు తీసుకువస్తుంది మాతో చేరినందుకు ధన్యవాదాలు వెల్కమ్ టు ద స్పోకన్ ట్యూటోరియల్ ఆన్ డైలీ డజన్ రికమెండేషన్స్ ఫర్ డయట్ అండ్ లైఫ్ స్టైల్ ఇన్ దిస్ ట్యూటోరియల్ వి విల్ లర్న్ అబౌట్ రికమెండెడ్ డయట్ అండ్ లైఫ్ స్టైల్ ఫర్ బెటర్ హెల్త్ డయట్ అండ్ లైఫ్ స్టైల్ both play a vital role in maintaining good health 12 dietary and lifestyle changes are recommended to maintain a healthy life follow them daily and you will observe a reduced need of medications eventually you may even get off the medications so let's begin Here are the daily dozen recommendations for your overall well-being. First, dairy products and animal-based products should not be consumed. This means no animal food, no seafood, no eggs. No animal-based milk or milk products. This means do not consume yogurt, cheese, butter, or any other milk products alternately nut based milk or plant based products can be used for example 
coconut milk, almond milk, oats milk and peanut yogurt. Second, refined or highly processed foods should not be consumed. That means no oil and no sugar. However, there are a few exceptions for some individuals. For example, people who are not on any medications for chronic illness. Those who don't want to reverse the disease or who wish to maintain it as it is. They can use a maximum of 2 teaspoons of sugar and ghee or oil each day. Thirdly, you should eat from all the five food groups. The first two food groups are fruits and vegetables. Beans and legumes comprise the third group. The fourth food group is grains. Nuts and seeds belong to the fifth group. Herbs and spices are highly recommended and should be eaten regularly. One-fifth of your daily calorie intake must be eaten from each food group. Daily calorie intake of a person varies with age, gender and physical activity. You can have different varieties from each food group as per your choice daily. To lose weight faster, eat the minimum recommended from the nuts and seeds group. The minimum recommended is one-fifth of your daily caloric intake. Fourth recommendation is about eating fruits and vegetables daily. Eat at least 1% of your body weight as fruits. Also eat a minimum of 1% of your body weight as vegetables daily. Half of it should be locally and seasonally available green leafy vegetables. You must include locally and seasonally available berries as well. To reverse a disease or reduce weight, you should consume more from this group. Fifth, watch for three key nutrients that is vitamin D3, omega-3 and vitamin B12. It is best to get vitamin D3 from the sun. Take a D3 supplement only if you are deficient. You may also take it if you do not get enough sunlight. Make sure that you are getting enough omega-3. Nuts and seeds are good sources of omega-3. Eat at least 1 tablespoon of grounded flax seed. You can also eat chia seeds every day. Also have 5 walnuts daily. If you are trying to reverse disease, you can eat more. Try to include one Brazil nut each week. It is recommended that men must eat pumpkin seeds. Take vitamin B12 supplement too. It can be a daily dose of 50 to 100 micrograms. Alternately, it can be 2000 micrograms every week. Remember to consult a doctor before taking any supplements. Eat as many varieties from the three key nutrients. Sixth, keep your body hydrated at all times. Drink a minimum half liter of warm water first thing in the morning. This must be done even before brushing your teeth. Drink one glass of water an hour after dinner. Also drink one glass of water before going to bed. The rest of the day, eat your water as much as possible. This means eating fresh fruits and vegetables rich in water. For example, watermelon, muskmelon, sweet lemon, orange, cucumber, tomato, etc. Seventh, practice 16 is to 8 intermittent fasting daily. That is, in a day, follow 
16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of eating. To achieve this, begin slowly. Reduce your eating period to 8 to 10 hours gradually. Finish your dinner at least 3 hours before bedtime. Preferably before sunset. Intermittent fasting is explained in another tutorial of the same series. Please visit our website for more details. 8. Do therapeutic water fasts. This means while fasting, you should consume nothing except water. Fast for 36 hours every 2 weeks. Also, do 9 days water fasting once or twice each year. During the 9 days, have one 500 calorie low protein meal each day before sunset. Ensure that protein in this meal is below 5%. The ninth recommendation is to stay active. Go out during daytime for some time, even if there is no sun. Walk 10,000 steps or more daily. Do some exercises such as cardio and stretching. You should do some stress-busting exercises as well. For example, walking, running, swimming, cycling and dancing. Remember not to exercise at night. Tenth recommendation is to sleep a minimum of 7 to 9 hours daily. If you are unable to sleep much during the week, sleep well on the weekends. Switch off all blue light emitting devices at least one hour before bedtime. Devices such as mobile phone, television and computer. You can also put an external filter screen on your devices. It will reduce the impact of the blue light. You can also adjust your device settings to reduce the impact of blue light. Eleventh is love your family and friends unconditionally. Stay connected with them. Twelfth, pray regularly and have a positive attitude full of gratitude. To start making changes that matter, follow this one thumb rule. Ensure that at least half of the total calories intake comes from uncooked food. This will happen naturally as you follow the given recommended guidelines. Eat some sprouted beans to increase the percentage of raw food in your diet. Secondly, cook the vegetables or curries without ghee or oil. Here are a few suggestions. Use grounded mustard seeds or nut butters like peanut or cashew butter. Bake the foods or use air fryers to replace deep frying. Avocados are 80% fat, so mix them into the dough to make healthy parathas. Saute onions and spices in a few tablespoons of water or use vegetable stock. How to cook curries without ghee or oil is explained in the recipe tutorials. Please refer to our other tutorials of the same series. There are no restrictions. Eat a variety of foods. Everything that you like and also some that you don't like. Eat as much as you feel like but do not overeat. No portion control is necessary. After 6 months of following this diet, rely on on your body's instincts. Based on these instincts, choose your food and its quantity. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.